And what is up, everyone? It's just past the top of the hour here on 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, Monday. And you know what that means. It's time to kick the tires and light the fires, Big Daddy. It's time for the Digital Dash. I am your host, Javier Reyes. And for the next three hours, I'm going to be talking to you about all the stories, impressions, unabashed opinions, and little idiosyncrasies that exist out there in the world of pop culture goodness. And sometimes featuring only, and I mean only, I don't know how many times I have to stress this, guys. I only feature the most illustrious of guests. For today's episode, we're talking about the end of the Digital Dash, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a good ride. Gonna, gonna go over that. I'm sad. You know, the end has finally come. And I hope you're all are here for this ending. It's gonna be a good one. Then, talking about another ending end of my beloved Los Angeles Chargers by the hands of the evil cowards known as the New England Patriots. Going to talk about that a little bit, a little funeral ceremony. And then after that, going to talk about my favorite movies of 2018, which I wrote about this past weekend. I'm going to talk about that, my top 10, dive a little bit deeper into that. And then two, two, two very interesting guests today. One of them you guys know, Mr. Anthony Gabinelli, the sports editor of the Montclarian, and his friend, we, we refer to him as the father, or some call him thick as a brick. You know, that's what some call him. I don't know about everybody, but some do. Mr. Anthony DeGenero. I hope I said his last name right. I'm not really sure. So for, t- for now, I'm going to call them the Army of Two. The Army of Two Anthonys. They're both going to be coming on a little bit later in the show. Talk about our last semester of college. It's kind of crazy that this is my last semester. Both of theirs as well. That's going to be kind of crazy. Just what does that feel like, you know? And then we're talking about our favorite pop culture moments of the year, whether it be music, movies, TV, you know, just just what we thought was some of the biggest stuff that happened this year. You know what I mean? It's going to be really cool to have guests on. I know I kind of talked about this last week, but this time it's going to be a little deep, bit deeper and a little bit more variety and not just my own opinion of pop culture this past year. But before all of that, of course, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going through the news roundup in the form of the opening dash. So stay tuned, guys. We'll be right back. You're listening to Digital Dash here on 90.3 WMSC, Upper Montclair. And what's up, everybody? We're back here on 90.3 WMSC, Upper Montclair. You're listening to the Digital Dash. Sorry for my crazy, like, I don't even know what my opening was. It was just kind of all over the place. I don't know where I was going with that, but hopefully you're still tuning in and I didn't scare you off. We're going to go through some of the movie and movie, TV, and gaming news roundup, followed by my reads of the week. Starting off, New Game of Thrones Season 8 teaser was released last night with a premiere date set for the final season uh, for April 14th. Um, As you guys know, I've talked about before, I haven't watched Game of Thrones. It's one of the great kind of misses on my part when it comes to TV and stuff like that, which TV, I have a bereft of that. But like when it comes to Game of Thrones, I've, I've certainly been missing out. And I can't, so that's why I can't really talk about the teaser and what it meant. It was kind of ominous, very, I don't know, like metaphorical a little bit. It was strange. I have no idea what's going on, but I'm sure that people are fans of the show. We're losing it as usual because it's, you know, it's like the biggest show that we have right now, honestly. Um, and I'm looking forward to just the ending. I'm trying to, you know, at least maybe get through season one by the end of my break. Uh, we'll see if I can do that. Um, it's more, more uh, unlikely than not. Um, but yeah, we'll see what happens. April 14th, final season of Game of Thrones. It's going to be crazy that month. That month is going to have a point when both the final season of Game of Thrones, which is a series that people have basically been waiting for an ending to since like the 90s-ish, I believe, when the books were coming out. And then people who were fans of the show have been waiting for it too. And then Avengers Endgame is going to be coming out in the middle of that too, April 27th. That's going to be pretty nuts. Or 26th, one of those two. That's going to be pretty – like, that. I don't understand, like, how the discourse is going to happen. I just don't know what our pop culture and social media worlds are going to look like when those two things are happening basically at the same time. So that's going to be something to look forward to. And speaking of Marvel stuff, uh, there's a new Captain Marvel trailer that came out. Movie still set, you know, obviously for March 8th. Uh looked kind of cool. Um, I'm really excited for that movie, um, as I think most people are. Uh, it was just a nice little trailer. It came out. You guys can check that out if you want. Um, and next, this one is um, something that I definitely care about a lot. Uh, reading from The Hollywood Reporter. Whew. Bill Simmons has set his next HBO documentary. 
um, from his Ringer films at HBO following on the success of 2018's Andre the Giant. Simmons will executive produce Showbiz Kids, a feature-length doc about the highs and lows of children working in the entertainment industry, featuring interviews with some of the most famous former child actors in the world. Alex Winter, a, f- a former child actor turned director, will helm the project and also serve as an executive producer via his Trooper Productions, along with Glenn Zipper of Zipper Bros, uh, Netflix's Dogs, is what uh, um, Zipper Bros they're from. Uh, the project will be the first at HBO since Simmons signed a new deal there in July. I have been fascinated by this specific topic for an especially long time, so grabbing the chance to explore it with people as talented as Alex and Glenn was one of all-time no-brainers for me and everyone else at Ringer Films, said Simmons. There's a high degree of difficulty for this one, but I also think that's what makes it so appealing. Um, so I'm really excited about this one. It's a, I, I love Bill Simmons. I've mentioned it before. Definitely one of my idols when it comes to uh, career goals and, and all that stuff. I'm not going to get into that right now, but I'm really excited for it. I like the idea, you know, the, the child actor thing, because I feel like our hit rate when it comes to child actors is kind of low-ish, depending on how famous they get. And I feel like the doc is going to really do a good job of exploring that. As someone who frequents the Bill Simmons podcast, he talks about that a lot of time, the whole child actor kind of uh, phenomenon that happens where a lot of them, when they become super famous, things just seem to not go well for them. You know what I mean? It's hard to handle that kind of fame when you're that young. And Macaulay Culkin probably being the poster boy of of such things. Um, But yeah, looking forward to that Showbiz Kids of HBO doc being executive produced by my man Bill Simmons. Going to really be anticipating that one. Uh, next story, uh, this reading from Deadline, I'm just going to basically sum it up a little bit. But basically, Richard Schiff has confirmed talks of a long-rumored West Wing reboot. And here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. I just mentioned how I don't watch a lot of TV. I just started watching the West Wing over this break. I would say like a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks, I started watching it. It's my mom's favorite show ever, so that's kind of why I got into it. She's been asking me to watch it basically ever since I was a kid. Um, but I guess I wasn't ready for it, and now I basically decide to watch it. And it's just making my life great. You know what I mean? It's awesome. I just finished the first season last night. Uh, it's been awesome watching with her, especially. Um, but in this case, it's it's kind of insane. This is the second time for me where I've started a new sh- like I've started a show that's been going on for a while, and then for some reason news breaks for that show later. You know what I mean? Like new news comes out for it. So it happened with Brooklyn Nine Nine, where I started watching it essentially just because there was a funny like video of an opening they did in that show that was trending on Twitter and then I got interested and started watching and then like a week later there was the cancellation announcement from it being canceled on Fox and then of course what happened is that it got picked up by MSNBC and that season just started but it's just weird to me I was like oh my gosh I killed Brooklyn Nine-Nine and then I start watching the West Wing and then this report comes out that they're really seriously talking about doing a West Wing reboot I mean you guys can check out the deadline article it basically shift talks about uh, Sorkin is basically thinking of starting maybe like a new administration, kind of a newer cast, uh, the, the main new cast, you know what I mean? The others will still be involved in there. I don't want to read too much just because I don't want to take any chance that I spoil anything that happens in this show because I really love it. So yeah, um, West Wing, widely regarded as one of the great shows ever, um, might be getting a reboot, so take with that what you want. Uh, next up, Star Trek Four and some legitimately sad news. Star Trek Four looks like it's not on the... Uh, not on a good pace to be renewed, or should I say, not renewed, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. I'm um, reading from IGN. Uh, the troubled Star Trek IV has reportedly been canceled after its director left to direct a Game of Thrones prequel pilot. According to Deadline, the in-development follow-up to Star Trek Beyond has apparently been shelved following S.J. Clarkson's decision to join HBO's new Game of Thrones series. Back in August, the project was said to be in trouble after Chris Pine and Chris Hemsworth refused pay cuts. At the time, Paramount insisted that the project was not on hold, but the additional loss of a director may have been the last straw. Um, This makes me really sad. The 2009 Star Trek movie is one of my favorite movies of all time. I just thought that that was the the epitome of how you make a good reboot of established franchises and characters. I thought it was done brilliant, and I've watched it way too many times. My mom can definitely attest to this, too, because it's one of her favorite movies ever, and she's a big Star Trek fan, like old-school Star Trek fan, so for her to say that she really loved it, I I think carries a lot of weight to it, especially. And... It, was, it made rounds when they said that S.J. Clarkson was going to direct because it was a female director, and that would be the first time for Star Trek, and the first time for, for I think it was maybe some sci-fi movies or something like that that we've had one in a long time. So that was really exciting, but then the news about them not wanting to take a pay cut, meaning they as in Chris Pine and Chris Hemsworth, and now it looks like the director has stopped. No, it doesn't look like it has happened where they dropped out because they're directing Game of Thrones prequels. So that's, that makes me sad. I know a lot of people... I feel like ever since Star Wars kind of came back into the the cultural zeitgeist that we haven't really cared about Star Trek as much, 
which is fair. But also, I think Star Trek, in a lot of ways, is still just as valuable and interesting as Star Wars, if not more. Um, a lot of people would say more, especially people in my immediate family. So yeah, legitimately sad news there. And a little bit of a, a strange kind of report uh, from the Hollywood Reporter, Karen Gillen, Karen Gillen, sorry, to star in assassin action movie Gunpowder Milkshake. Reading from the Hollywood Reporter, Guardians of the Galaxy and Jumanji star Karen Gillan has signed on to Top Line Gunpowder Milkshake, an action thriller from Studio Canal at the Picture Company. I mean, and the Picture Company. A Heron Kershalas and Navat Papachado, the duo behind the dark Israeli breakout Big Bad Wolves, are directing the project. The pair also wrote the script with Ehud Lavsky. Uh, plot details are being kept muzzled, but the pick is described as being in the assassin genre with a story that spans multiple generations. The entire cast is envisioned as being all female, with Gillen the cornerstone. Okay, so people, yeah, Kill Bill, the opus by Big Bad Wolves fan Car Quentin Karen Tarantino and Edgar Wright's Bear B. Driver are the touchstones of the project, with stylish, snappy, and violent its watchwords. So Karen Gillen, who I think is kind of an underrated up-and-coming actress right now. I think that she's really good. Um, I just think that she's only known for her big roles in, not even big roles, but her roles in Guardians of the Galaxy and um, uh, Jumanji, um, Welcome to the Jungle. And this is interesting that she's going to star in it, so this might be like a breakout project for her, potentially. But mostly, can we just say that title again? Gunpowder Milkshake. Like, I, I wish that that was the name of a book I wrote. Gunpowder Milkshake. That might be the best title of a movie I've heard in a long time, honestly. Like, that's just incredible. Um, it's just it's just amazing. Like, what is that? And it's being described as a cross between Baby Driver and Kill Bill. So for all of you people who just had no idea what this movie was before I started talking about it, stay, take note. Because this is, I'm really keeping an eye out on this one, and I can't wait to see more about it. Uh, but yeah, let's move on to the next story. Um, Dave Bautista, this um, reading from Variety, is set to join the Dune reboot, reboot so reading from there now. Uh, Dave Bautista has joined Legendary's Dune reboot starring Timothy Chalamet, sources tell Variety. Denny Villeneuve has directing and is co-writing script with Eric Roth and John Spaths. Rebecca Fer Ferguson is also on board. Legendary closed the deal with the Frank Herbert estate in 2016 for his famous novel, granting the studio rights to both films and TV properties. So, yeah, here's the thing. I don't know much about Dune, and it's a book that I still want to write. I mean, not write, uh, to read. And from what I've been told by a lot of people, it is essentially one of the great lost treasures in terms of not because people don't know what it is, but because it had the blockbuster pop culture ubiquity, I should say, that Star Wars had, that, that kind of potential apparently. And in some ways, which my mom um, probably can attest to better than I can because it's like her favorite thing ever, um can be better than Star Wars. So I'm really curious to see how this goes. Denny Villeneuve, as everybody knows, uh, director behind things like Prisoners, uh, Blade Runner 2049, um, and one of my favorite movies, uh, Arrival. Uh, one of the great kind of, up, not even up and coming, because I think he's, he's arrived, you know what I mean? Uh, directors that we have, and I think he has an eye for sci-fi and just a creating just good stories, man. I can't really pinpoint precisely what I think makes Villeneuve's movies so interesting, but him helming the project definitely means something, and it's kind of cool to see Dave Bautista get a role um, because I think he's incredible as Drax, honestly, in Guardians of the Galaxy. And he's kind of becoming just improving as an actor, I think. So this is kind of a nice little thing. And, yeah, I'm super excited for this Dune thing. But I do want to try and finish the book before the movie comes out, which at this rate I might not have time, much time to do. So hopefully I uh, get to do that soon. Um, next up, Coming to America 2. <laughs> I can't believe this. Uh, Coming to America 2, reading from Deadline, um, Paramount Pictures is setting Craig Brewer to direct Coming to America 2, finally bringing to the st starting gate the sequel to the 1988 blockbuster comedy. Eddie Murphy is poised to reprise his role as Akeem, the pampered African prince who became bored of potential marriage partners in the Kingdom 2 in awe of him, and who traveled to Queens to, under to go undercover and find a woman with a strong will that he could respect. So I haven't seen this movie before, and this was kind of just an out-of-nowhere announcement that I was not expecting. I've heard of Coming to America. A lot of people like it, and it's apparently very, very funny. Um, so I'm going to be watching that now. <laughs> it's a movie for me to definitely put on my watch list that consists of about 800 things, but I will get to it. Um, so that's interesting. I don't know how people feel about this. Uh, it's definitely something that I feel like the older crowd m might be able to attest to more. People that are older than me, I should say. Um, and, I mean, I'm interested, but 
I want to know from people whether or not that is something that was worthy of being brought back. Or is this one of those things that shouldn't be brought back? You know? Who knows? Just who knows? Because like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know anything, guys. I don't know how many times I have to say that. I just, I really don't know what I'm doing here. You know what I mean? I'm distracted. Sorry. I'm trying to like push the monitor a little bit back. But anyway, uh, just a couple final stories. Number one, uh, the Critics' Choice Awards came out last night. Um, there's, I don't want to go through all the winners because I feel like I already did kind of an award show segment um, last week. Um, but you can take a look at that. I would definitely recommend if you, if you want to kind of have like a better predictor of what could happen at the Oscars, the Critics' Choice Awards are definitely more, more, um, a, a, be, a more apt um, kind of award show to look at for what might be what how the Oscars might turn out. I phrase that a little bit uh, strangely, but so if you want to see the winners of that, people like um, uh, Glenn Close of The Wife um, looks like she might be the front runner for the Oscar for Best Actress and, and such Best Supporting Actress and such such. So we'll see what happens there. Um, but yeah, so you can check that out. Um, number two, I don't really have a report from this, but Spider Man trailer for Far From Home, Spider Man Far From Home. Uh, there's been a lot of rumors that the trailer is coming out this week, and Tom Holland has basically been responding to people on Twitter. These really funny guys who, uh, these kind of I think British guys that make these crazy, like just absolutely lunatic videos on Twitter and post them about how they want the trailer for X Marvel movie, um, and they did it for Avengers: Infinity War like famously last year, and they just went crazy. And I think it's definitely some uh, kind of joint agreement by the two that they would kind of, you know stir up the interest and. In. Tom Holland today was said, so I talked to Sony. That was his tweet. Um, maybe the trailer released, as far as I know, it could have released right now. But it sounds like it's probably going to release tomorrow. Um, so I'm really excited for that. Unfortunately, it didn't come out today because I wouldn't have been able to talk about it on my show. But oh well. Sorry, guys. Guess what? You won't be able to hear me talk about Spider-Man too much for once. So I, I guess that everyone breathed a big sigh of relief just now. Um, and the last thing is the Oscars are reportedly not going to have a host don't want to get too deep into this right now just because there's it's such a uh just such a, a whole a, a deep dive that i would have to go into to get into that but i do have a read of the week that i'm going to get to that can kind of succinctly summarize everything um in, an, in a way about why it's so hard for the oscars to find a host right now and why they're not going with one and one of the rumors actually is that they're trying to get multiple hosts and stuff like that and they're trying to recruit, like, the Avengers. Not literally, like, those characters, but the actors for them. And have them all kind of taking turns and, you know what I mean, like, putting their stuff out there and whatnot. So we'll see how that pans out. Definitely not going to have a host. Maybe they could. They might have a host. Someone could jump in at the last second. But it would have to be pretty soon. And also, uh, Kevin Hart definitely will not be hosting the Oscars. That thing is for sure. So, yeah, guys, we're going to take a quick 30-second break. And when we get back, going to talk about some gaming news and go over my reads of the week. And then continue on with the show. You know what it is. It's 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. You're listening to Digital Dash. Stay tuned, guys. And what's up, everybody? We're back here on 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. Just got done through the movie and TV news. Now we're moving on to gaming and the reads of the week. Uh, not too much in gaming, so don't worry if this isn't your thing. I know a lot of people typically don't care about the video game stuff on, on the show as much as some of the more movie-centric stuff, but I still like doing it. Um... First up is PlayStation 4 sales. So just going to read from IGN really quickly. Just kind of a general type of thing to get through. PlayStation 4 sales have exceeded 91.6 million units worldwide. Um, PlayStation 4, as of December 31st, 2018, has officially sold more than 91.6 million units globally. Announced by Sony Interactive Entertainment, 2018 holiday season saw over 5.6 million PlayStation 4 units being sold, pushing the system to its new sales milestone. As for the games, more than 50.7 million PS4 games were sold during the holiday season, bringing the worldwide total to over 876 million PS4 games sold since Sony's latest console launch on November 15th of 2013. So yeah, um, I've talked a lot about the sales and how we, you know, PlayStation 4 is a big console, and it's just to talk about how, like, I remember years ago when people thought that console gaming was dying, which I kind of thought, I think at the time, had some validity to it, so I'm not going to blame people who thought that, because it was true that the the smartphone and the Apple, like, you know, the App Store, and just having these fun, quirky little games, you know, the dual jumps and the angry birds of the world, people were thinking, are people going to want to buy consoles anymore if you could just have some small pocket size these games? I think that it was a little bit exaggerated, but I could understand why people thought that it was on the down low, or it was going on the downturn. But clearly that was not the case. PlayStation 4 is still uh, as big as ever, along with, you know, Nintendo Switch, Xbox One. And also a big thing with the PlayStation 4 is that it has a high attach rate. Something like 8.6, uh, 
which I think is arguably even more interesting because that means that people who are buying the PlayStation 4 aren't just buying it for one game and they keep staying with it and they keep getting interested in the ecosystem and the games that they have. So it shows you that Sony, no matter how many kind of weird decisions I think they've been making, especially over the last several months, uh, they're still out there and they're still doing good. And uh, in a lot of ways, it shows that maybe they shouldn't rush out the next PlayStation console. I've been saying this for a while. I don't think people really, really need it that much. That's just me, though, but, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, just a short little thing. Uh, Downwell, which is a, kind of this really quirky little platform game, uh, is coming to Nintendo Switch January 31st. If you haven't played Downwell, I recommend it. It's a fun game. Uh, very simple. One of those endless runner type of games, but it's really addicting, and the art style is super basic and kind of 8-bit-esque. But it runs really well, and it's it's just a lot of fun. It's a simple game. You can probably find it on App Store or the Switch or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's coming to the Switch January 31st. Uh, this next thing is is gaming, but it's also kind of politics. Um, reading from Polygon is that Soldier 76, who is one of the big popular characters from Overwatch, has been announced as not announced, but has been kind of quietly, as Polygon has said here, reading from there now, uh, Blizzard quietly confirms another LGBTQ Overwatch hero. Um, in a, in a new short story titled. Basta, uh, Blizzard Entertainment. Oh, wow, Blizzard Entertainment confirms that Soldier 76, aka Jack Morrison, is the second LGBTQ character in the Overwatch universe. Um, so I'm not going to get too much into it because I, you know, I haven't played Overwatch in a while. It's not something that I overly care about. But it's just a small little thing, and I assume that because of this, it will probably be getting banned in Russia again, as it did when Tracer, the literal uh, poster character for the game, uh, was also um, an LGBTQ character. Um, and I thought it was actually handled really well. It's just a quiet little thing, and everybody needs to relax. This isn't actually a big story, but it's a big story for the people that think it's a big story, if that makes sense. It's a big story for how little of a story it should actually be. Um, and it's cool. What, one thing I always respect about Overwatch is that it has such an eclectic, just varied cast of characters, whether it be their orientation or their race or just how they operate as a gaming character. I just really think that that's one of the big reasons that their game succeeded, which might be a commentary on just how we as a society might succeed. We just have some different people involved. But I digress. Moving on to the next story, Kirby and Yoshi. The next Kirby and Yoshi games have gotten release dates for March. This reading from Variety. Kirby's Extra Epic Yarn and Yoshi's Crafted World are both releasing in March. Nintendo announced Tuesday via press release. Both of the games, which each feature a handcrafted look, were announced with no firm release date. Kirby last year and Yoshi's game in 2017. Kirby's Extra Epic Yarn is coming first on March 5th, and Yoshi's Crafted World rounds out the end of the month with a release of March 29th. Um, so this is cool. I'm looking forward to the Yoshi game, especially because I feel like we haven't had a Yoshi game in a really long time, and it looks cute. You know what I mean? I might pick it up. I don't know. But it looks super, super cute. And I remember when this was announced. Yeah, summer of 2017. It was weird. I remember that it, I heard that it got delayed, and that game is secretly actually in some development trouble. And the reason why, yeah, games being in development trouble, as I've said many times before, and them getting delayed, is nothing new for video games. It happens all the time. But with Nintendo, Nintendo, as much crap as I give them, and much, and as much, you know, you know, I'm, as much as I criticize them, the one thing they do is they make games that work. That sounds like easy to say, but what I mean by that is they don't have these these patches, they don't have games that glitch, they just fundamentally know how to make games that don't have those extra, like, you have to download a patch day one, or you have to be online and do this, or the servers don't, they make games that work. That's one thing I always say about Nintendo. They just fundamentally get that, and they've been in the business for the longest time out of kind of the big three. You know what I mean? So it makes sense that they kind of just they just get that core thing. So I always give them credit for that. They just know how to make games at a, at, at a core. You know what I mean? It's just the same shame sometimes that they mess up with some of their business decisions, in my opinion. Uh, but next up, one of the biggest stories that happened in gaming last week was uh, Bungie, the developer behind the Halo series and more their most recent project, uh, Destiny. They're splitting with Activision. Reading from Kotaku, uh, developer Bungie and publisher Activision are splitting up an industry-shaking divorce that will see the shared world shooter series Destiny enter fully into Bungie's control. This development comes after years of tension between the two companies, tension that has existed since before the first Destiny even shipped. Bungie, the studio that created... Sorry about that. The studio that created and has led development on the franchise told employees during a team meeting this afternoon, framing it as a fantastic news for a studio that has long grown sick of dealing with its publisher. Employees cheered and popped champagne, according to one person who was there. So that, that's interesting, the fact that they were so overjoyed about it. Activision is, I think they sometimes get a bad rep. They, they're they money makers and they know how to make money from games. And that, that sounds like a 
a boring thing to say, but like they know what is selling and whatnot. And people often, you know, criticize them because they usually run franchises into the ground, um, which is true to a large extent. You just have to look at the Tony Hawk Pro Skater season where they just milk it over and over and over and over and over every year until people are sick of it and they can't stand it anymore and then it just dies. Um, that's that's what happened with Tony Hawk Pro Skater, among many other franchises. Um, I'm not sure if this necessarily means that Destiny's going to be better or if it means Activision might be like, hey, we know that this isn't going anywhere. I don't know yet. I haven't decided on that. I think Destiny has some potential, but I do think that maybe some of the elements in the game with in-game content and the kind of the pay-to-win aspect, maybe that might have been some corporate overlord type of action that was involved there, and maybe that um, without that it could make the series better. Or it maybe it means that they're going to move on to something else. I don't know. But it's a big, big, big story um, for those that are involved in gaming and pay attention to this kind of stuff like me. Um, the last thing is just a kind of a, a weird story, which I'm not going to get into too much. I had no idea about this, but Drake was apparently supposed to be a voice actor in Gears of War 3 back in like, you know, which released back in 2011. Uh, just a funny little story. And apparently, um, I think it was Minnie Driver was also supposed to, supposed to be a voice actor in the game. It didn't happen. And there was like a recent article in IGN that you guys can check out that kind of went over that and that there was some reports about why that didn't happen. When I thought it was just a quirky, dumb little story. Um, and then lastly... Resident Evil 2 demo, uh, Resident Evil 2, not the old game, but the remake that's coming out. Um, there's a demo that's been released, and what I like about this is I don't really care about Resident Evil that much, but I'm definitely going to check this out because, from what I've been told, it is a 30-minute demo that you can only play once. And that's just fascinating to me. That It's it's like, what, like this is like Mission Impossible. You know what I mean? Like where the note like disintegrates or whatever after you view it. This is just fascinating to me, um, that there's this demo that you can only play once. You know what I mean? So I'm just on that alone. I'm curious to check it out because I don't really typically care about the Resident Evil franchise, but um, I know a lot of people do, and I'm I'm definitely interested. I'm interested in just at least playing this demo. You know what I mean? Is there something in there that makes you think why is this only 30 minutes? Are they just trying to add that so people are even more excited for the game? I don't know, but it's an interesting um, kind of wrinkle that's going on there. But yeah, that's it for the the gaming news. Um, now we're going to go through my three reads of the week. Uh, first up, why no one wants to host the Oscars, which I alluded to earlier. Uh, from Vox, the Vox, not Fox, uh, by Elisa Wilkinson. Um, she's actually been to the school before. She was here last year um, as a guest panelist when we, uh, to talk about the Oscars last year. Um, so if anybody went to that, that's who this person is. Um, she's one of the panelists there. Um, this is just a good kind of summarizing article about kind of what's wrong and why isn't the Oscar host something that's a more coveted kind of honor and title and hosting job that you would want to do. And also talks about who could be doing it. One of the reports is that, like I mentioned earlier, that the Avengers cast could be involved in some way or another, which would make sense since it's ABC, and they are, of course, owned by um, Disney. And that, and then they talk about what has this ever happened before, and spoiler, yes, it has happened. And she gets into that, talks about why um, or what it was like when there was no host and just what it means to be an Oscar host. I just thought it was a really good overview type of piece that talks about everything and questions that people might have that aren't as familiar with how the Oscars work as as some others might be. Um, next up, the 50 best moments from an amazing movie year. This is from The Ringer, which website I bring up a lot, written by Sean Fennessy. It's a little bit old. It happened before break even, basically before break even started. But I figured it was appropriate to bring it out today since I'm going to be talking about my favorite movies of the year. Um, it's just a nice little a piece that that's just, you know, straightforward. It's the 50 best moments that he had for the year of movies. And even for movies that I didn't see, I agreed with a lot of them. Um, and it was just cool to see this recap of like, wow, there was a lot of cool moments this year, um, which I might talk about later on in the show with Anthony and Anthony, both Anthony's. Um, and lastly, super old piece. Going to be honest, guys, didn't get a lot of reading done this last week. I just didn't. I mean, I did, but it was for work related things. And I just they weren't things that I, I want to necessarily recommend on the show. Um, um, this It's an old piece that I'm a big fan of. It's is Toad wearing a hat or is that his head? A serious investigation. It's from the website Dorkly, which is definitely not a site I bring up often on the show. It's very, it's kind of like a meme site that just posts like funny pictures and funny little things and whatnot. Um, uh, by Tristan Cooper and Juliette Le Petit, and it's is exactly what it says. And it was just one of my favorite pieces that I read in 2017. It was just so ridiculous. The art that they had some people make for that was incredible, and it's a serious deep dive. It feels like something that my beloved Shay Serrano would write about. Yeah, the sh- is show is Toad's little mushroom thing is that his head 
or is it a hat that he's wearing? And it dives deep into the Mario sphere and all the games and deciding whether or not he, it's a you know hat or a part of his head. And I thought it was funny. Um, but yeah, that's it for, for my reads of the week and all the news, guys. We're going to take a little bit of a break now. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. I talked really, really fast, and I'm tired already. Just kidding. I'm never tired. I never tire. I never sweat. I never settle for anything less than 100%, of course, as everyone who knows me. Um, but yeah, guys, we're going to take a little bit of a break, and then after this, we're going to talk about the end of my show. Unfortunately, we're going to have to get into that, and then go on to talk about the Chargers this weekend and what happened and how I'm going to have a little funeral for them. So stay tuned, guys. Listen to 90.3 WMSC, Upper Montclair. And what is up, everybody? We're back here on 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. Just got done going through all the news and stuff. And now, you know, I, I've, I've teased it, and I, I think it's time we just get right into it. It's the end of the Digital Dash, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just kidding. Of course I'm kidding. I, I wonder if there's anybody that I got with that, my social media stuff. It's not the end. Well, it's, there's an end of sorts, I guess. I have the ending time for my last semester of college. That sort of ending, I guess. So it relates a little bit. Digital Dash's new showtime will be Mondays from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. So it's still Mondays, everyone. It's going to be awesome still. Uh, just a different time um, time slot. Uh, it's the only one that, not the only one, but it was the main one that worked out for me. So I'm really excited about it. And um, I'm going to be the first show of the week outside of the morning buzz. That's kind of cool. I'm the headliner. I'm just kidding. I'm not the headliner. Definitely not. But uh, it's really cool, and I'm really excited about it. Um, I really want to reach out and have even more guests next semester. I've already talked to some other friends of mine. Just have more people, um, both from this school and some friends that I know outside of school. But I just want to get more people, um, and that's just that's just what I do. I love talking to people, and I think that it's, it's going to be a lot of fun next semester, and hopefully more opportunities open up with that and new people. Um, I really want to do more different segments and you know, have some returning staples. You already know I'm going to have Rob on for the Oscars. You, I mean, you you know. Like, I don't know how many... Like, I don't care if he graduated. I don't care. Like, I just don't care. There's the one way or another Rob will be on to talk about the Oscars, whether it's when the nominees come out, January 22nd, or whether it's the day before and our predictions. He's going to be on for the Oscars. I just guarantee it. You know what I mean? My friends Noah Grossman and John Ostrowski will definitely be on at some point. Uh, we did a, a lot of things this semester, especially with uh, the latter, Mr. John Ostrowski. Um, but I definitely want to have them on to continue what was one of possibly one of the most uh, highly regarded, highest reviewed segments that we've done here on The Dash, which is the Superhero Fantasy Draft. I'm kidding. I don't actually know how anybody felt about that. But we're going to be doing the Super Villain Draft. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're getting evil in here. It's going to be exciting, guys. I can't wait for that one. Um, definitely going to have that. Anthony, who's coming on the show in a little bit, he's probably going to show up uninvited. I'm just previewing that. That's probably going to happen. He always manages to do that, so looking forward to that. Um, and some, there's a lot of other segments I have ideas for. Still going to talk about video games and stuff. Still have the opening dash and all that. But there's a lot of like little ideas I have for just fun little segments to do um, on the dash this next semester. It's going to be hard to, to fit everything in and do all the work for it. But guess what? You know, ain't no rest for the wicked, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to try my best. Might even do this thing, the League of Leagues draft. Might update everybody if I'm ever, like, you know, kind of uh, um, sparse of topics. I couldn't think of the phrasing there. But um, the League of Leagues is this awful, awful idea me and my friend Mike Cavalier have. I mean, we didn't come up with it, but we want to do it. It's this league where it's, it's a fantasy league where it's all three sports that you're drafting from. Baseball, football, and basketball. Might update you guys on that because I just think it might look really funny. If I talk about it on the show, I don't know. We'll see about it. But yeah, we got so much that we're going to do. Um, it's not the end of the dash, but the dash might be ending next semester because I'll be graduating. So that in that respect, the end of the dash will be May something, whatever my graduation date and whatever the last day is. It's probably going to be the end of the dash, ladies and gentlemen. But don't worry, it will live on forever in my heart and hopefully yours, too. Um, but I'm really excited for that. But yeah, that's it for that. Um, let's transition now. Some football talk. Bolt down, ladies and gentlemen. Hashtag bolt down. My beloved L.A. Chargers, they were murdered by the cowardly Tom Brady this weekend. It was tough to watch, ladies and gentlemen. Final score, 41-28, to which does not stress the game enough. A lot of the points that the Chargers scored were in garbage time. It was depressing. I feel like all the games this week, aside from the Philly game, um, which really ended in a such a sad way with Alshon Jeffrey 
dropping the pass that went right through his hands. And Nick Foles, who was just becoming a a legend, he already is a legend, but becoming even more of a legend. Um, unfortunately, um, that did not happen. He didn't catch it. But it was nice to see Doug Peterson and Nick Foles like really console him and be like, hey, like it happens. You know what I mean? You don't got to beat up on this guy. I hope nobody really beats up on this guy too much. And I doubt that that team is. I feel like that team's really tightly wound together and they really um, support each other. And they probably know, hey, this is the guy who basically won us the Super Bowl last year. He made some outrageous catches in the Super Bowl last year. So that's part of it. But I guess that's the payment for it. So unfortunately, they lost. Not unfortunately for that they lost, but it's unfortunate that it kind of ended that way. I wish it was a little bit different. I wish that we got more of a, not a climactic end, but an end that was like not someone making such a, a, a mistake. You know what I mean? I don't like it when sporting events end on a mistake. I think most people can probably agree with that. Unless it's your favorite team, which in that case you're thrilled. <laughs> if you're a Saints fan, you're thrilled and you don't care. But just in general, I think more people. It's it's nice when it doesn't end that way. But anyway, back to the Chargers. Um, so there's a couple things. First of all, I feel like a lot of people were hyping up this game on the Chargers' behalf a little bit too much. I think people were expecting them to upset the Pats, which is – I shouldn't say they were expecting, but it was it was too many people were expecting that. And throughout the week, I remember I, I, last week, I didn't want to talk about the show – Cause, and I said, I thought that the decline of Brady was being overrated. I think people have treated this year like it's been Peyton Manning's last year, that type of bad. When Peyton Manning it was his last year with the Broncos, the only reason he won the Super Bowl was because of that defense. I, I, I mean, I could probably look up the stats. I think he threw maybe 13 touchdowns total. It was probably something crazy like that. Like, he was terrible. He could not throw the ball. Brady's just not looked like he was in his prime this year. Um and I don't necessarily think he played brilliantly well. I think that the Pats just came prepared, and it showed you how the Chargers coaching staff especially, not necessarily Mr. Um, Anthony Lynn, but Gus Bradley and Ken Wisenhunt, clearly weren't prepared, especially with the um, with the former. Uh, Gus Bradley, I don't know what the Chargers were doing on defense. I don't know if they showed up. I don't know if they actually went to meetings and did football talk. I don't know if they studied any film. But Julian Edelman, pretty good player. Uh, along with a lot of the other uh, Patriots receivers, why are you playing zone against Tom Brady? I mean, you could probably, there's probably a montage on YouTube of announcers and analysts or whatever talking about can't play zone against Tom Brady. You better have like the best zone of all time. And I'm just watching Julian Elman run that same little in, in and out route or whatever you call it, you know, when you, you run straight and then turn to the left inside the middle of the field. And I'm like, what are you guys, like, they scored in like five seconds. The Chargers miraculously scored back with kind of a fluke blown coverage play on Keenan Allen, and then the Chargers, the Patriots come back and score again in like 15 seconds, and they're playing the same defense, just all this zone coverage, not blitzing Brady at all. You have Melvin Ingram and Joey Bosa that can get after him, and they held him in check. So to me, it was a reflection of Bill Belichick one being just a brilliant coach and knowing what to do, and second, just that bye week helps I think a lot, and two, the third, just the Chargers doing a Chargers thing. I feel like when the Chargers lose in the playoffs, it's always for a weird reason, except except maybe like that 2013 year when they made it kind of miraculously and then they beat the Bengals in Cincinnati. Then they lost to the Denver the next week. That one wasn't as much of – it was a little bit them not game planning correctly where they tried to play too conservatively the entire game. But uh, this – it just feels like a lot of times something weird happens when they were 13-3 and three and – stupidly, which is the worst sports loss I've ever had in my life, was when they lost to the Jets in the playoffs that one year. It's the absolute shambles match that happened there um, where they just completely blew it, and it was ridiculous. It wasn't like the Jets played necessarily better. It's just that the Chargers forgot how to play football for a whole game, um, combined with a good defense by the Jets. But still, and it just it's disappointing, and I'm really sad. And it wasn't quite as devastating of a loss because it is the Patriots, and it happens. And I know Jack... If anyone was listening to the show before, his friend is a big Patriots fan, and we didn't fight much. I will say this, though, is, you know, everyone's going to say, oh, you're being a sore loser. It is kind of ridiculous that the Chargers were a five seed. It is kind of ridiculous that in order for them to have made the playoffs as a 12-win team, for them to have made the play the Super Bowl, I should say, they would have had to play three away games. They would have had to go from L.A. to Baltimore, which they did, then L.A. to New England, then L.A. to Kansas City. And it's kind of insane considering, and I don't think this is a bias, that they were easily one of the five best teams in the NFL this year. I think that if you look at the playoff picture, I think they were better than the Eagles. I think they were better than the Bears to an extent. I think they were better than, in the AFC, I think they were better than everyone except for the Patriots. No, not the Patriots, than the Chiefs. I know the Patriots just beat us. I'm saying 
regular season wise. I think they're a better team on paper for sure. I don't think anyone would dispute that. Better than the Colts. Uh, better than the Ravens, clearly. Better than um, I would say who else? Who did the Eagles beat last week? They beat the Bears. I'm forgetting that it's. I think they're better than the Cowboys, and I think they're better than the Seahawks. I think they were like the fourth or fifth best team this year, and for them to have that kind of unfortunate, you know, thing happen to them where they they just kind of got you know screwed over a little bit with that with the seating, and it shows you how important it is for you to kind of get that. Um, you know, get that one seed or win your division and get the, the playoff berth. But that was unfortunate. Um, but, yeah, they were just ill-prepared, man. Um, and for a lot of teams this weekend, I thought people were ill-prepared. It was really unfortunate. You know what I mean? Um, but I'm going to take a little bit of a break and just prepare for that, um, actually. Nah, maybe I won't. I don't know. I don't know if I want to take a break or not. Not really feeling it, you know? <laughs> uh, not really feeling it. But um, just with the Chargers moving on... Um, it was really sad, and I don't really know what to where to go for the rest of the year with this team. I don't know what they can do. I guess I don't know what to. I don't know what they. Yeah, like I just don't know what they could do. I don't know what where they go from here. I think Rivers is getting old. He looked old in that game. It wasn't all his fault. Don't get me wrong. They didn't play brilliantly on offense. Although the dirty secret with the Chargers is that they kind of finished the season really poorly on offense. Um, it just felt like they weren't. They just didn't, didn't have it. And if they had that one seed, things might have been differently gone differently and also people who doubted the Patriots I don't know what people have been watching the past few years I know it's been trending like on Twitter a lot where people are like Max Kellerman said you know I'd rather have any other quarterback in the NFL than Tom Brady this year and so would you and people kind of railing on the Pats and how easily they were going to get blown out by the Chargers and all this stuff and yeah those people it's like they're just trying to get hot takes and whatnot and put them out there just to freak people out but that's ridiculous like Tom Brady like I would have taken him over almost any quarterback in the playoffs you know why because he's Tom Brady I don't care how poorly he looks. That team is going to find a way, and he's going to find a way. He always seems to. And I can't stand the Patriots, but I have to, you know, give credit, I guess, and it's unfortunate. I just don't like that people thought. I don't want people to turn this into a, wow, the Patriots are back. I don't want them to turn that into it. I don't think the Patriots ever really left. I just think that this wasn't their best season. And you know what? Two years ago wasn't their best season either. When Brady won the MVP that one year, he wasn't that great. I don't think people looked at that. I was like, or he didn't win the MVP, but he was in contention. And I was like, what is this? He wasn't. You know what I mean? Like, he just wasn't that great. You know what I mean? He was fine that year. And Matt Ryan, of course, ended up winning, and people would throw back in my face, oh, well, that's why he won the Super Bowl, right? Whatever. I'm just talking about regular season. Um, But, yeah, I thought, I really did think that the Patriots' demise was a completely overstated thing this year. I just thought that it was a weaker version of their teams of the past. That's all. I thought that they would be fine in the playoffs, and they got that seeding because the AFC East is a joke, and I'm pretty sure I could win that division with some people from Madden and from middle school. I could probably win that um, division, but whatever. Um, congratulations to the Pats. It's the end of the Chargers, and it was a fun season, though. I enjoyed it. Um, I really did. There was a lot of big wins. Steelers win was one of my favorite things that happened last year. Chiefs win as well. Um, but once again, you know, Phillip, I think that was it. I think that was probably his last big chance to, to win a Super Bowl, and it's unfortunate. I don't know how he's going to be next year. You know what I mean? He is like 38. Um, and I know he's aged well, but still, I don't know what they're going to do. And I don't want to say move on in quarterback, but I think they definitely have to start thinking about it and maybe start considering in the back end of rounds to start signing quarterbacks and maybe put someone under the wing, you know, under under Rivers' tutelage, you know what I mean, and try and prepare for the future. Um, and as I was saying before, let me just quickly go through the rest of the games. The Colts lost to the Chiefs 31-13. The Rams beat the Cowboys 30-22. to And New Orleans, of course, beat the Philadelphia Eagles 20-14. to uh, The Kansas City Chiefs game, I actually think, th- I think I talked about this last week just a little bit. I thought it was the only, out of all the games, I thought it was the one that had the highest chance for a blowout. I did not predict that, though. Um, obviously, the biggest blowout was probably the Chargers and the Patriots because that game was over after uh, Desmond King muffled the punt when they were down 28-7, to and then the Patriots got it again and scored. That's when it was over. But um, with the Chiefs game, it was conceivable that maybe they come back a little bit, the Colts. But I thought that one, people were down on the Chiefs. They were bringing up the Andy Reid thing, and they were bringing up how Patrick Mahomes hasn't played in a playoff game before, and I just thought, it's too much, man. I just thought it was too much. And people were getting way too excited about the Colts being the Texans the week before. I think that was one of the problems. It was kind of like a little bit of a trap. Um, the Dallas game was actually, some people, it was a blowout at one point, but it really wasn't. It was actually a pretty contentious game the whole way through for the most part. Um, and it was cool to see the Rams win because I really wasn't in the mood 
to hear people talk about how Sean McVay is overrated and he can't win in the playoffs, despite this is only being his second season as the coach. But you know that that was coming and um, just wasn't in the mood for that. And also, I hate the Cowboys because they're another fraudulent team that should not be getting nearly as much media attention as they are. They are not America's team. That is a manufactured idea that people have sold to everybody. Um, maybe they used to be America's team, but it does not make sense that every year since 1996 that they go up in revenue and more people are Cowboys fans. Why? Why are they still America's team? They have not won since I was born, ladies and gentlemen. The Philadelphia Eagles won a Super Bowl before they did. The Seattle Seahawks won a Super Bowl. The Patriots won like 17,000 Super Bowls before the Giant, the Cowboys, allegedly America's team, won a Super Bowl. The Saints won a Super Bowl. Give me a break. You know what I mean? Peyton Manning, when he could barely walk, the, the decaying corpse of Peyton Manning won a Super Bowl before the Cowboys did. That's why I hate the Dallas Cowboys. Because them getting attention specifically from people who are not older, like my generation, that are being Cowboys fans, it's ridiculous. You better be from Dallas if you're a Cowboys fan and you're around my grade. You know what I mean? If there are any uh, young Cowboy fans listening, then please, please, please call in. You know what I mean? I, I dare you to talk about this with me. Actually, don't call in. I don't want to be mean, and I don't want to. I don't want. I don't want to get bullied or anything like that. I'm scared. I don't want confrontation. But yeah, guys, those are just some of my thoughts. The burials, the burial of the Chargers. You know, we just passed the top of the hour here on 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. Um, I'm gonna take a little bit of a break, and when we come back, I'm gonna talk about my favorite movies of 2018, and I think the two man duo is coming. I think so. I think they're on their way. We'll have to see. So maybe they're gonna come in and. Maybe we'll just, I'll have them chime in on my favorite movies too. Um, so yeah, guys, stay tuned. You're listening to Digital Dash here on 90.3 WMSC, Upper Montclair. What is up, everybody? Sorry about that. Uh, you're listening to 90.3 WMSC, Upper Montclair. I am your host, Mr. Javier Reyes, who made a technical malfunction there. My apologies. Um, and yeah, we're back here. We're back. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how else to intro this. Um, my the double two man two man duo of the Anthony should be here momentarily, but until then, I'm gonna just start talking about my favorite movies of the year. All right, so let's do it. Let's just do it. So if anybody wants to check it out, I wrote on my personal blog. It's called Pop Candy. Um, you can follow me on social media if you want to like just keep up to date with anything I write in that respect. Um, at Havapeno, which is spelled J A V I I P E N O. You'll probably find a link there somewhere. Um, but I wrote about my favorite uh, movies of the year. Simply, you know, simple article. I haven't, I do it every single year. I've been doing it for four or five years now, where I write some type of article chronicling my favorite ten movies. Um, and you know, this one was a little bit late. Got it done this past Saturday. So yeah, like I said, pretty late on it, but um, better late than never, as I always say. So I'm gonna talk about them. You know, I'm gonna talk about them. I'm gonna talk about my top ten, um, which is nothing new, nothing you know, totally unique that I've done on the show before. I've talked about my top 10s a lot, but here we go. Let's do it, folks. This is my definitive top 10 movies of 2018, starting with number 10, Game Night. And like I said, I do recommend people checking out the piece if they'd like. Um, this this one, Game Night, is one of the bigger surprises that I had for the year. Game Night is a movie that felt like... It, it's, it's directed by Jonathan Goldstein and John Francis Daly, who John Francis Daly, I secretly have a lot of connections to. Um, because he was on a sh the show Bones as Detective Sweets, and I used to watch Bones all the time for some reason. I loved that show um, a while ago, back like in my high school days. I remember watching that show with my, my dad all the time and my mom a lot, especially on Netflix streaming. Um, but that happened, and he also was the screenwriter for Spider-Man Homecoming, which I did not know, and he's also going to be co-directing The Flash movie from the DC uh, Entertainment and all that stuff, so that's going to be interesting. So yeah, it's like I'm weirdly, I'm like weirdly actually very familiar with this guy's work, and I loved Game Night. And the reason I loved Game Night is because one, it was surprising. I always like it when movies sound like they're going to be one thing, but then something completely, or at least they're better than just straight up like better than what you expected. And Game Night's one of those movies. It is the funniest movie I saw this year, um, and it was it was just really it's deceptively smart, you know. And there's not too many big actors in here, you know. You got Jason Bateman and um, and, uh, what's her name? I'm forgetting. I'm blanking on her name right now. Um, from the, from the, let me just look. Uh, Rachel McAdams. Thank you. Uh, I don't know why I'm saying thank you. Nobody's here, but, uh, Rachel McAdams is in it. I love Kyle Chandler. He's also in the movie. And that was like, kind of like the main thing I was looking forward to when I saw that Kyle Chandler was in the movie who I love and respect forever. He's the greatest human being actually in the history of mankind. 
Um, and he's known for Friday Night Lights, but definitely, which is his big thing as Coach Taylor. So that's why I love him so much. And that's kind of why I was interested in the movie. I was like, this looks dumb. It looks fun. And then I saw it. And one, I laughed a lot. And two, the movie, like I said, is really smart. And a lot of times it feels like a parody of like old school mystery thriller type of things. It feels like it satirizes that genre a little bit. And it does it in a really – like it's just a really funny movie. And it's it, it'll take you off guard. Like you're not going to be expecting – just some of the twists and some of the things that happen. And everybody in this movie clearly looks like they're having a fun time. That's another thing. The entire cast from Bateman to, to Chandler, like every single one looks like they're having a blast filming this movie. And like I said, it came out of nowhere and it was super fun and I really enjoyed it. There's not much else I have to say about it. I know that it made a decent amount of money at the box office, but I don't know too many people I've seen it besides me, honestly. Um, but I really loved it and I'd love to, um, see it again. Because I'm, I'm definitely will be seeing it again. It's a funny movie, guys. I don't really know what else to say about it other than that, you know. And you know, that's that's it. That's it. That's all I have to say. And here they are. Oh my gosh, this is it. Oh my gosh, he's opening the door. Here they are. It's both of them. Oh my gosh, it's it's thick as a brick, Mr. An- <laughs> That's exactly what I open as. Joining the show, everybody, is Mr. Anthony Gabinelli, the sports editor of the Montclair Student Newspaper. Hello. And then, joining for the first time, which mic are you going to, bud? Which one are you going? Second one? Uh, I think I'll go on this one. You're going that one? Yeah. How do you say your last name? De Janeiro. De Janeiro. Okay. So I did say it right when I first said it earlier yeah. for my show. Okay. De- Anthony De Janeiro, who I know from Twitter, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I know him from. It's, uh, uh, it's pretty amazing. Here. It's pretty amazing. Can we um, introduce Ski Brother on here? Uh, is is Ski Brother a a thing we want to introduce? I mean, I had never Ski Brother wasn't a thing till this winter break. So. <laughs> I can only hear out of one ear in this headphone. Uh, um, yeah, that nice. one's a little weird. Okay, that one's cool. a little weird. So um, I'll just I'll just do I'll just do this happens. then. I'll like I'll be me when I'm downstairs in my basement playing games, and I think my mom's calling me mm-hmm. from upstairs. All right, <laughs> that, that's fair. That's fair. It's like you're okay. out, you're that's such a, like a specific description yeah, of how yeah. you're just going to approach this She's situation. She's got to call like, me for something. <laughs> and I want to make sure I hear her so she doesn't yell at me later. That's actually super fair. I get that. Yeah. That's actually a pretty good analogy. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, I like it. But uh, actually, you know what? We're going to take a quick break, guys. And when All we right. get back, going to get back into my top ten movies and introduce Mr. Mr. Anthony DeGeneres who I'm meeting in person for the first time. This is a big <laughs> moment for me, guys. I don't think you understand. This collaboration <laughs> was weeks, months yeah, in the uh, making. Months, and months, 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 semesters, months. Semesters maybe even. I think semesters since last semester. I think so. Uh, because a year in the making. I followed him on Twitter after he attacked you, which we're going to talk about on, <laughs> off air with some comments. It's an that interesting really adjective I would uh, use. Yeah. But, uh... <laughs> but yeah, uh, stay tuned, guys. This is 90.3 WMSC, Upper Montclair. And what is up, everybody? We are back. 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. Hold on one second. Very professional. <laughs> We're back, everybody, here. Wow. 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Ski, <laughs> bro. Ski, brother. <laughs> you listen to the Digital Dash, all you guys out there. Maybe it's a little cold for you. You're all bundled up with some, some college radio. <laughs> I'm happy to oblige. I'm being joined by Mr. Anthony Cabanelli. Hello. Sports editor. Yep. The Montclair newspaper. Mm-hmm. And Mr. Anthony De Janeiro. Yeah. So, um, that's my new character I'm going to implement now. I just thought of that right <laughs> going now. Going out. I'm glad your last semester you're implementing a character. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I put my uh, sunglasses down indoor, indoors, that'll be my thing. The wolf man. Boy. The wolf. I don't even know what I was doing. <laughs> the wolf, the wolf man. <laughs> um, You're the wolf among us now. Yeah, I am the wolf. Ah, nice, nice. I like what you did there. But, Mr. Deej, I, I always, when people uh, show up on the show first, I, I give them a quiz, and if they fail, then I actually kick them out. So, oh, are you ready? Well, no, I'm kidding. Down, I guess. I'm kidding. Uh, oh, okay. It's just whatever you whatever you want to say to the viewers. It's a very, it's listeners. very opinionated, like, quiz. I had to take this. And no, yeah, but I got rid of it quick. Yeah. <laughs> I got rid of it. I was like, eh. <laughs> so, yeah. He looks so upset. Yeah. He's like, what? <laughs> I, I, I kind of want him to do it, though. Do you still have it? I, no, I, I I'd be down to take this quiz. I'm, I'm it was just random challenge. questions it was. with the aerobic song from the 80s playing in the background. Oh, come on, man. That's like right up my alley. All right, I might do that over the break then. But I have to like come Bang. up with 27 questions really quickly. But <laughs> I could probably come up with I them right was now, 10. honestly. I'll just come up with some. It was like a lot. It, it was a lot. I honestly dude. thought it was 10. 
You guys have finished them, right? I think I answered that. That's 27. He was like, um, I don't know. <laughs> Let me get back to you. Okay, get to the next one. I'll skip it and then come back later. <laughs> but yeah, I uh, might get into that. So, Deej, uh, you can tell everybody anything you want about yourself or sure. you know, school or whatever. What are you? What, what are you? Um, well, first off, it's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, oh, right. <laughs> you all right there, bud? <laughs> Hold on one brother, my phone just broke. Ski, <laughs> phone broke. <laughs> I'm going to dump that. I don't know if you cursed or not, but yeah, no, we're back. But, um, <laughs> start over. Um... um What's up, man? Yes. Tell, tell the folks. Um, what are you? What am I? Well, mm. uh, I think I think I'm a little boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, first off, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, mm. You know, after talking on uh, Twitter and uh, other assorted social uh, media, social media, uh, mm. it's finally good to see the man in person and uh, to finally be on the digital dash. Uh, avid fan here. Um, <laughs> I, I don't. I, I don't know. I, st- I guess uh, I, go, I go to Rampo. Uh, I study film over there. Uh, just released my debut short film, uh, which you can find on YouTube. Um, uh, I'm here with. Uh, oh, it's called Oh Boy. There you go. Uh, mm. <laughs> thanks, so, thanks, man. I completely so forgot oh about Oh Boy. That. Okay, interesting. <clears throat> oh Boy. Interesting title. Oh Boy. Very interesting title. Oh Boy. So yeah, I wanted to talk about that real quick. Sure. Yeah. Lay it on me. So this was for a film project, right? Uh, yeah. So I took this class called uh, Directing the Fiction Film. Um, last semester and uh for the final for that class we have to make our like debut short film i guess um i i guess it's not really like my debut short film as i've made some before but this Mm -hmm. is the one i actually had like a budget um actually got actors for uh had to promote it make posters stuff like that we had a premiere in the theater and stuff like that which was really cool um so yeah i would i guess i'd call this like my debut short film in a Mm -hmm. sense so Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're one of them. You're one of them filmmakers. I'm one of them uh, film guys. Film guys. Yeah. Interesting. One of, the, one of them. The, films. In the film fraternity over here. The so. film fraternity. Yeah. One of them film. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, can't, I can't let the character come out. Oh, yeah, the glasses are down. So we got to we got to chill out. I got to take glasses off. The wolf <laughs> among us. It's like the. Down. He's got to be put away. He's got to be like the put him back in cage. Um, so I watched it. Yeah. And I liked it. Thank you. I had no idea what was going on. And also, to be fair, I like to be real on this show. I have no idea how to make movies, no idea whatsoever. I like making fun of them when they're bad, which <laughs> honestly, they're not always bad. But uh, I watched it, and I just like – I always like anything that's new and weird and all over the place. Mm-hmm. Um, I was really – this kid right here. <laughs> they can't say this kid right here on the radio. Okay. They don't know who. I know. You know well, they know. They know. <laughs> they, they just know what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? People are they, – they know. They okay, so, so Mr. Anthony, he – and me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Gosh, this is going to be frustrating. But we'll get through it. Um, He's like this cop person. I, I don't want to spoil, like, the the thing. And if people want to check it out, just where can they check it out? Uh, they can check it out on my YouTube channel. Uh, I don't know how you're going to link that on a radio show. I can show, link it I... through words. Oh, that he can. So, mm-hmm. well, my YouTube channel is called Anthony L. D. Gennaro, mm-hmm. Um And I, a D-E-G-E-N-N-A-R-O. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's right there. It's just it's plastered all over the, the front of my channel. So, mm-hmm. um, and I, I post about it a lot on, on social media too. So if you follow my Twitter, look on my Facebook or Snapchat or Instagram or anything, I'm always promoting it, talking about it. So, mm-hmm. um, there's always a link there too. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's really cool though. So yeah, I, I would recommend if people want to check out movies, they're interested. I would too. Can, you can uh, do that. Yeah. And Anthony <laughs> over here, sports editor, Anthony. All right. Yes, so. It is. I that's, really don't want to do Anthony and Deej. I, I just it, it's just bothering me. I need to come up with a better name for. Can I just say thick as a brick? Can I keep saying <laughs> yeah, absolutely? That? You can say thick as a brick. This uh, is this is the, this is the thing now. Absolutely. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, one thing about the movie, and I don't want to spoil everything, but it definitely takes a turn, mm. and it definitely feels like something that was intended to be. I don't want to say shocking, like, <gasps> but shocking as in like, oh, okay, this is not what I thought this was about. Yeah. Um, and I still don't get it. I don't want to talk about it too much because I I think people should check it out. Um, and have the, the surprise mm-hmm. saved for them. But what what can I ask you? What the the influence was for the inspiration? I should say for the title of it. Oh boy. Uh yeah. So um with an exclamation point. It, it, yeah, with an exclamation point. Yeah. Um. So really, my my main I guess inspiration when going into the title was um was really based around that. Like the whole like crux of the movie was really just about that reveal and that that shock and. I chose the title for a couple of reasons. One was um, I was hoping that's what people would say uh, when the reveal mm-hmm. happens. Okay, uh, at least nice. that's kind of like what my reaction was. Really, it came from a couple of uh, – we had like this kind of a, like a table read in a sense. Um, and we were just like floating ideas around, like bad ideas and stuff like that. And uh, one of my – when we were reading it, one of my – a couple of people that 
um, were reading the script said, oh boy. And I was mm-hmm. like, yeah, it was then it was then untitled. And I was like, oh, well, you know, if people are like saying that reaction based on like, like, I don't know, there was like maybe 15 people there and they all said, oh boy. I was like, maybe that's kind of the reaction that this reveal is getting. So, mm-hmm. um, oh boy, just kind of fell into place with that. I, I, I was thinking of like really stupid titles for it too, like. I, I well, I guess they would spoil it, but um, yeah, so yeah I was thinking really stupid titles. Almost like what people would say when the reveal happens. I feel like my reaction would have a curse word involved in it that we can't say <laughs> on air. I'd be saying the other one. Can, can, you, can you say a word that rhymes with it? I don't want to take a chance anymore these days. You know what I mean? Can it's I say H E double idea. hockey sticks? Yeah, you can say that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think there are some that you can say as long as it's not like I curse you to you. You know, yeah. you can't be like crazy about it. There's Especially, gonna be like a book of like words I can't say, so I can read it. Just to have in the back of my mind if I really don't want to be on the show anymore. <laughs> if you want to just get kicked off immediately. I would get kicked off. How dare you? <laughs> You're going to take yourself start, down with me? I'll start, I'll start uh, uh, reciting some Sheck West lyrics. Oh, Jesus. Some of them. Some, some Bomba. Yeah, some yeah, yeah. Bomba. Yeah. But, um, yeah, man, I thought it was really cool. I always like seeing just anyone um, who real quick, does things. Haley says hi. Who? Haley Wells, our editor-in-chief. Oh, the editor in chief? <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm kidding. What's up, Haley? Oh, wow. Um, that's awesome. I have to have her on the show too. It's just sometimes I worry about because I only allow the most illustrious of guests on the show, which I've said many times before. <laughs> oh, no, I'm, I'm, oh, no, let me. So get why to is it. this kid on here? I don't understand. I don't, but, hey, no, but what I I'm drove saying, you here. Oh, hold on. <laughs> You're making this sound like a diss. So I'm wondering, am I am like, is she too illustrious of a guest to have on? I mean, this is the editor in chief we're talking about here. So I'm a little worried. You know what I mean? I don't know if, like, it's like if I walked up to Justin Timberlake and was like, hey, can you come on the show? Like, And you have no idea who I am. That's what. It, that's the equivalent, basically. I wonder, I hope she doesn't, like, say, like, I hate Justin Timberlake. Because, <laughs> like, like, I don't know, Haley's one of those people where I don't know what she hates. You know oh, what I mean? I yeah, and then yeah, sometimes yeah. when I think she's going to hate it, she's like, oh, I love that thing. It's always a slippery yeah. slope. It's a slippery slope, kind of, but in a really great and lovely way. Oh, so shout fantastic. out Haley Wells, the editor-in-chief of the Montclair. Hey, Haley, I don't know you, job. shout out. Yeah, shout shouts, out to you. Shouts to Haley. Um, she's a big fan of sharks. She's really, a big sharks person. Not the hockey team, but oh, just the, like the the, the, the species, the, the, the animal, species, the, yeah. fish. the fish, the fish, the mm-hmm. fish. But um, <laughs> uh, I forgot what I was even saying before. But talk about the movie. Yeah, talk about his movie. And uh, yeah, um, I'm the bookkeeper what, here. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but what I, you know, I'm per- someone who definitely likes it when people do anything that's creative, like their own projects. And I was just a fan. I don't like doing the like. I think some people think I'm being like fake with it. I just think it's fun just to promote people's stuff and be like, hey, yo, check out this guy right here. He did this movie called Oh Boy, and Oh Boy, is it good? You know what I mean? But, <laughs> I'm surprised uh, people haven't actually like said that yet. Like, yeah. oh boy, it's good, or oh boy, it's bad. Like, should, I haven't, you should make like a trailer. Right. <laughs> you should make a trailer for it that has like reviews. You should have like the digital dash. Yeah. Oh boy, is it good? Yeah, like, yeah. like it pops up right there, and then like make a fake one that's like Wesley Morris, New York Times. This is phenomenal. <laughs> like, then you get sued, and that'd be bad. Uh, yeah, but no, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm a fan. Um, I'm a fan of your Twitter, and I'm a fan of just meeting people for the first time when I met them <laughs> over Twitter and whatnot. It was quite the interaction. I'm going to find that over the break at some point. No, I don't know. Please do. Like, I that, was a, that. that was a great, great day. But yeah, man, um, it's awesome to have you on the show. Thank now, you, Now, do you guys want to get into the final semester thing and how we feel about how it's our final semester of college, or do you want to – I say we do that first, actually. I'm taking all charge. Right. We're going to do that first <laughs> because I just want to save all the pop culture for the end in my sure. top ten movie. So sure. my apologies to people who were listening. I actually thought they would be here a little bit later. I didn't realize that. It's my fault, though. Oh, I yeah. Just, shout, I said, uh, real quick, shout out to my husband. He's listening. listening. So, yeah. Um, who, shout I'm shout out to Rob. Literally who's Rob? Literally who's right my here. husband? I'm literally I, I, right here. You're in the office. How often? <laughs> hey, how's it a winter? A there's, a, a, only... there's a Wait. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I've t- there's another husband? I've talked that, to you see, about him I think there's going to be a fight here for the first time on the digital dash. I was thinking, don't you understand? I was trying to save your life here. That's why I said, are you kidding me with this? I've talked to you about him so uh, so much because I love him. Well, you know what? Maybe it was just white noise because I didn't I told, want to realize the fact that yeah, there was another man in too, my man's life. So. Because I, I can have I'm, – I'm a polygamous man. I can have more than one husband. Get out of here with that. Are you kidding me? I, I'm a little I, – I, I, I am a little he, upset. He's even aware of my boyfriend, Ben. Mm, another one of your boyfriends. There's a there's – a, there's a, Boyfriend? There's a boyfriend. And his name is Ben. Can I? Can I? Leave? He's our can photo. I? He's our. He's our fantastic photo guy. Oh. Love him to death. No, that's good. shout out to Ben. No, please. But shout you know what? Ben. Between you two, I can't really decide. There's just 
Yeah. Are you kidding me? Right we can now? we can we can have a discussion about this off air though. But yeah. oh, oh, I think we're gonna have mm-hmm. a discussion off air about this. Mm-hmm. Speaking of things that a lot of people like, yes, as in polygamy. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, uh, so school. Yes. Yeah, it's it's a thing. It's a thing. Mm-hmm. We've both been in college, or all three of us, I'm sorry. I've been in college for a while now. It's kind of weird to think about that also. How does it feel being that this is it, guys? Like, that's insane. Like, when do you start? Have you started already? I don't know. Started back at the School of Ramapo College of New Jersey. Uh, no, I have not started yet. That's uh, next week. Next week. Next so it's the same, same as us, basically? Next Monday. Yeah. On, oh, no, on, I'm sorry. Next well, Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay, Tuesday. I was about to yeah, say, yeah, yeah, about no, to say no, oh, no, what, no, okay, what kind yeah. of school are you going to? You yeah, know no. I mean? <laughs> Come on now. Um, Respect the man, at least. Come on. Yeah, really. you, you got to. But I think that um, I don't really know. I didn't have any idea about what I talk about this topic, to be perfectly honest. But um, <laughs> what are just I don't know. Like what? How? When do you think it's gonna hit that you're done? I've been thinking about this for a while. When is it gonna hit? What point do you think it's gonna hit? Is it gonna be something that happened like an event, like maybe your last final, or is it gonna be like the first day, like next Tuesday? When you, you know think what I think it hit? is like like when I realize it's yeah. like, like this is it, like it's over now, or yeah. like um. I think it'll hit me probably the late the latest out of everyone. Mm-hmm. I think it'll hit me when like I start looking at Snapchat stories or Instagram stories of people moving back in, and I'm like, oh, I'm not doing that. What, oh, what do you it's... mean moving back in? Like, like moving oh, back like... into here, like when it's like September. Oh, so it won't hit you until like after. Yeah, because I'll interesting. Okay, like sure, I'll have the graduation, I'll have the graduation party mm-hmm. and everything, but like it won't like oh, it's just like a party, it's whatever. Oh, it's just a, some ceremony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then like it'll hit me like oh, I think so. Everyone's moving back in, and I'm not. I got that because I've been wondering now. about this for a while because I have yeah. no idea when it's going to hit for me, you know, and I'm not looking forward to it. I'm not one of those kids that's like, yeah, I can't wait. Can't wait to be in real life in the real world. I'm like, what? Why? <laughs> I don't think anyone really is either. I think everyone's more excited just to get the hell out of here. Yeah, true. Very true. Say that again. I just I just asked you if I could say H-E double hockey sticks. Yeah, but I don't I don't know if you can say it like that. I said, no, I thought you meant, can you say H-E double hoppy sticks? Wow, I am stupid hoppy for thinking sticks? that that's what you meant. You know what I mean? I thought that he meant, can you use that phrase? Yeah. No, oh, my gosh, yeah. So, no, I meant, like, the actual word. Thank you very much. I don't but, think you can. So no, I will I rephrase can. it. They can be weird. I think people are excited to get the heck mm-hmm. out of here, mm-hmm. this school, <laughs> more than getting into the real world. So... That's what this I is meant. Incredible. This is just this an incredible. Is, that's more your fault than mine. Oh yeah, no, I am. I am blaming myself. Don't get me wrong. I blame him for everything, but I, this is this is on me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I think that. What do you think, Tish? What um, do you think? Honestly, it hasn't it hasn't hit me yet. Um, I, and honestly, I don't know when it's gonna hit me. I mean, there's like this something I always tell people like when they ask me this question is that there's this graduation like clock, like the countdown mm-hmm. to the days until graduation, mm-hmm. and every time i walk by the student center i see it and you know every day it gets a little you know there's there's less days till graduation on there and yeah i mean like it's a scary thought but i I feel like when i'm actually in that room with all of my classmates and i don't know throw my cap up in the air and then everybody walks out takes pictures has a graduation party i think like the day after that it'll hit me because like that's the day where i have to like go out, find a job, mm-hmm. go start a life for myself. Yeah, you know I, what I mean, I think that's the most like the universal belief is that it's going to be when you sit down and be like, apply for a job. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's not literally this, like a giant green button that says apply for a job, but <laughs> if only it was that easy. I think it's going to be stuff like that, especially if you don't, you don't start now or if you don't have a job offer after you're done with school. I think that might be when it hits. But then again, I just don't know because I'm, I'm thinking about grad school still, I'm thinking about all that that, that jazz, yeah. you know, that Jupiter jazz. I'm thinking that um, I, I just – it's so weird how for high school when that ended, I was like, oh, no, at the end because, you know, I thought it was going to be the end of the world, I think, as most people think. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. you'll never see your friends again. You will. This isn't like when you didn't have cell phones. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that was, you know, tough for a little bit, and then it was okay. And then we realized, wait, now it's okay. Now whenever we were, like, seeing each other for the last time for the break, we're like, all right, bye. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> it's, like, super basic. <laughs> for college, I think it's different because college is, like – important not that high school isn't it is very important too but college is when it's like actually feels like it's like yeah you do what you are possibly going to be doing Mm -hmm. not all the time i know some people they choose majors they don't necessarily like and what have you and you know what i mean you could be a a history major and all of a sudden you're writing about games i don't know It it could be anything um but i think with 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 college one thing that for happened for me is 
my first two years here, I I can't talk in detail what I did, but wasn't the most uh, productive of times, I'd say. It definitely wasn't productive. I mean, I saw this kid like once. It was, uh, well, we had professor. class. Yeah, we had yeah. class. And it was twice cool. Yeah. yeah, we had qu- class twice a week, and I just like vanished off the face of the earth. Then I started getting more involved, and I just just caring about life again, not to get too dark. And now it's like, wow, like I actually think I'm going to care when I leave. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I think if you asked me this question in sophomore year, I'd been like, yeah, whatever. I don't care. I can't wait until I'm done, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> mm-hmm. Oop, can't can't let it come out. You know, got to be careful. Gotta be Take careful. the glasses off. Um, no, but like, you don't understand. I'm not, I don't, I, he's he's inside me right now, making me put them on. <laughs> he's a part of The wolf man is now a part of me, Anthony. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you guys, like, what do you guys think? Like, how do you look at your college experience? I know it's hard because we're not literally at the very end yet. Mm-hmm. But like, is there yeah. any other like kind of thoughts you have perhaps? Um, I guess to start, I mean, college, college to me was, um, is it's, it's, it's been good, you know, like, cause like I, I've, I've done things that I never thought I'd do, um, when I was in high school and I had experiences that I could only describe as fantastic. I mean, I, I saw the world, um, when I, my first semester of junior year, I went and I did a semester abroad in England and, um, you know, high school never would have allowed me to not right. to compare and contrast over here, but um, I, I never would have had that experience had I not like gone with my friend to the office and said, "Hi, I'd like to go study abroad somewhere." And originally we were going to go to Italy, and I, you know, mm-hmm. I wanted to see like my homeland and stuff like that, you know, see my family and stuff. But that ended up not panning out, and um, so England was the next best option, and uh, so I did it. And um, you know, I saw the world. I, I ended up I ended up going to Italy and seeing my family and stuff like that, and uh, I saw Paris. I saw Barcelona, I saw Amsterdam, I, I saw a bunch of great places, and um, I I just don't think I would have gotten that experience had I not gotten more involved in college and activities around campus and stuff like that. And, you know, mm-hmm. I made a lot of great friends. Um, I made my debut short film, like just a lot of really mm-hmm. cool things that a lot of really big milestones that I've hit in my life that um, I really like because I went to college. And stuff. And granted, uh, it it was it was the uh, they were the most expensive milestones of my entire life. But uh, very expensive. Very very, very expensive. expensive. But I um, imagine. I say there. I say it was worth it. I say it was totally worth it. What about you, Anthony? So, first of all, Haley just sent a very funny message, and that mm-hmm. made me laugh a lot. <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah, he's fired now. So, uh, so now, now over? it's just Thomas and Sharif running the entertainment section. <laughs> so, what is yeah. it that you said that I said? I, I just, missed that part. All I saw said, was that you, you were said, fired. <laughs> you said you said who when I when I told you that Haley said hi. Oh stop! <laughs> oh stop it! No, that's not what happened. That you, that's literally what happened. I have I have a witness. All right, right yeah, here. but <laughs> yeah, but when I said who, I didn't hear the Haley part. I heard who else. I said because all right, Haley I don't know if hi. you've looked around, but I got this, and I got my computer, and I got my phone, and I got my water. That's important. I'm Stay speaking hydrated, into folks. a microphone, and you have headphones on. I don't understand how you could have not heard that. Well, you know what, Anthony? I don't understand <laughs> why you could have pretended that you hated Overwatch and then years later oh. yelled at me saying, oh, I, I liked it the whole time. First off, and I there's also that, proof of this on Twitter. This kid, no, no, no. I can actually attest to that. See? Because every single night he's like, you know, man, you know, you know, I'm, uh, I'm just down here. I'm playing D.Va. And, uh, you know, I think uh, Overwatch, I think it's like a 7 out of 10, bro. You know, it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. This kid has like 3,000 hours on it. He's got like the <laughs> gold, like the, the gold border around his name. He's got like seven stars under his level number. Yeah, all right. Yeah, all right, Anthony. It's a seven out of ten. All right, <laughs> rant. Um, yeah, yeah. He, he. This is the person who I have the actual tweet. I'll bring it up later. But he was like, Overwatch, more like overrated. <laughs> <laughs> because it won. Here's what I think. It won game of the year that year. Yeah. And then Doom was also on that uh-huh. list. I had more fun in playing Doom, a game I never actually finished, than playing Overwatch. Sure, I'm good at Overwatch, I, in my opinion. I don't think you understand. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but. I, I yeah I play it often because I think I, I have fun playing it. I don't but think you don't understand think I, what overrated means. I don't think that's something that comes in second. I don't think it implies deserved, that I don't think it deserved. First, I don't think it deserved an esports league. I don't think it deserved a an award. Okay. I just think it's a fun game, but I don't think it was. I don't think it's fun enough to win an award. Deez, you know what I always say on here. What do you always say on here, Javier? I always say that you know because there's a lot of opinions just, that get thrown on the show. Just that's drag me. Drag me. 
<laughs> what I always say is mud. drag me. I always say to people, I, I want to be like like serious about this and kind, and it's like it's okay to be wrong about things. You know what I mean? Drag and in me. this case, <laughs> oh Anthony, my god, <laughs> it is it's okay. Like I I understand your feeling. I've been wrong about a lot of things, and by a lot of things I mean nothing. Um, <laughs> um, wow. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> oh, I roasted him for his op- a Twitter opinion. I mean, movie opinions. Because some of them are abysmal. Oh, believe me. There's oh, my God. You have abysmal. no idea. Back when we ran the Cinema Dash, I was so close the to Cinema tackling Dash. That's you. the first oh, thing I, I remember. That. so close to tackling you at some point. Ooh, but it's fine. Why would you. Wonder Woman want to save people? Yeah, this Rob, if you're listening, you're, <laughs> Rob, if you're listening, you're the only husband now. That's it. Mm. Get out of my yeah. sight with that. All right. So, oh, yeah. oh, Anthony's ra- raising a mm-hmm. – he's he's killing D's right now, everybody. Oh, oh no. There is a this stake is a, through my heart. A, oh, no. There's a TV Guys. right there, a camera I'm pointing at right now, with all the footage there. I'm not doing anything. No, no. Oh, but there, right, no, there he doesn't camera. have to do anything. There's a, I'm already dead. So the real question fun. here was what do I think about my, my, my college career so far? Thus far. <laughs> and I'd like wow, to get back. Was a, I'm going to steal oh, this. Yeah, that, was, that was an eon ago. Because right. – uh, we're currently on several different tracks right now. I want to get back to the original one that we were on. Mm-hmm. Because this show, while it's amazing, is run by someone who uh, can't can't stay on the right on the right track. <laughs> yeah, Would yeah, rather uh, drag me than talk about what's, <laughs> what we talked about for the last three days. <laughs> it's like, I don't know if anyone read my best movies thing. I literally talk about myself before getting into it for like a half an hour. <laughs> yeah, I, that's just what happened. I did. You know? I scrolled. I, I read it. And I also, <laughs> but before I read it, I scrolled to like, oh, the list. Thing, like, it takes a while to get to the last part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then I read it. I'm like, oh, he's just talking. He's just doing that yeah. first. Okay. I like looked at it after I posted it and was like, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> just one of those. I'm like, huh. but yeah, Anthony, go ahead now. This is totally written speak. by someone who does who think that they never said anything <laughs> wrong in their life. <laughs> so, go for it, man. Um, yeah. so to get yeah, so to go back onto the uh, how we think uh, college has gone so far for ourselves. Um, freshman year was a little was a hard year for me. Um, more or less the first semester, then the second semester got got better. You know, we decided we're gonna. I decided rather I was gonna dorm here. Um. Sophomore year, didn't live with someone that I thought was the best fit for me. Those of you who know who that person is, you know why. Um, yeah, he knows. I think you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, people who are listening out there, including my husband, knows. Um, I'm going to so kill yeah. you. Shut up. Can I, can I out him and say his name with a rhyme? What? My husband? No, the one you that you outed. No. No? Oh, okay. Fine. Uh, for, the, for, for purposes? I'm sure he listens. Because you yeah. spent m- many hours ignoring me on Twitter when I was mm-hmm. posting his stuff. So thanks for that, bud. You're, I'm glad we're all on the, on the, I appreciate on the, it. On the, on the not hype train for I him. know that my picture is a bunny. It's okay. You know who I am. It yeah. says that in my bio. Relax, mm-hmm. bud. Anyway, continue on. I'm all glad. I'm glad we're all like not a fan of him. That was my job. I don't, I don't have like a fervent hatred as much as you do. But yeah. Okay. Anyway. Anyway. Um, oh, oh, oh. Okay. No. Did, did you not know? <laughs> please, what we were no. 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 I knew. I, I was like piecing it together, but I was like, oh no, I get it. I get it. No. Yeah, please continue. So, yes. Um, you know, life was uh was getting better sophomore year. Got a lot better. I think my life and how it was going and how I felt about it and it, uh, got better through the people that I've met, the relationships I've made, and the work I've done. I'm more than proud of what I've done. I know I can do a lot better things. Um, but you know, with the time that I'm given and it's just, these are all excuses, but like the, with the time I'm given, I was happy with the final product of what I made. So all in all, I'm happy at the end of the day. And when I graduate, I'll know that I'll be there receiving my, uh, receiving my diploma. And I'll be like, you know what? You did it's, good. I did it. You did something. I didn't think I would make it. I did though. So you did something. Yeah. I like that. I agree. And I'll do a backflip off stage. Mm. If you do a backflip off stage, I'd pay you one thousand dollars. Really? No. Bet. I have to make it because then he'll actually do Bet. it. I have to make it like twenty five. If I don't, I, I, like, this is like if I do the flip, I don't stick the landing. I still want the money. I want I just like the money for the attempt. All right, you do, but if you no, do you should stick give him it, half then you then get at more. That point because it was a, it was yeah, a you get like more if you stick it, something like that. So yeah. base is a thousand dollars. Yeah, some no, not a thousand dollars, dude. You know I go to college, right? And I have no money. I mean, you just you said a thousand dollars, and that's what I want now. I know, but I say ridiculous amounts of things all the time. So give me a, give me a realistic number then. Oh my gosh, dude. Um, no, they got me on this subject. Sorry. Oh, out. sorry, we got into a different track. It's <laughs> 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 never happened in the show's history before. It never has. It never has. You can look at the tape. It never has. I'm super organized, man. Um, I don't know. I don't know. 
I don't know. I, I have to I have to think about it because I'm being serious. That would be really funny. Because uh, I I haven't I haven't showed you, but you know uh, I have a cowboy hat now. Oh, he does. I yeehaw. do. Yeah, yeehaw, brother. Um, so I would I would totally wear it around. Some people might not might not like it, but uh, I would totally wear it around if people gave me the right reason to. <laughs> All right. So. All right. Fine. Fine. I'll shoot you a snap later of it. <laughs> You guys have any uh, last thoughts about college and the final semester when um, it's gonna hit? Because I don't know when it's gonna hit. I have no idea. Yeah, man, I feel it's like weird. it's a very. Uh, it, it, I feel like it's something that just like creeps up on you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, no, nah, in terms of like final thoughts, like you know, like like Anthony said, I'm proud of the work I accomplished there. Um, hopefully, I made somewhat of an impact on mm-hmm. people's lives there, and uh, yeah, I'm just looking forward to the future. So yeah, that's all you can yeah. do, man. Yeah, I'm. I agree. I'm genuinely happy with you know again with the people I've met here. The friendships I've made, the other relationships I've made here, the work I've done, whatever it may be. Um, but yeah, I've, I, I'm I, again, I'm just happy with what I've done here. Um, mm-hmm. Whether or not I, uh, the school is likes whatever I've done with the professors and stuff, I personally am happy with what I've done. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like it. Deep stuff, guys. Deep stuff <laughs> on the digital dash. But for now, everybody. Oh God, he's back. We're gonna take a break right here on the Digital Dash. <laughs> everybody out there, you're working hard. Ski, brother. Listen on that radio, turn that dial up. But for now, we're gonna take a little bit of a break. I'm gonna play a short song. It's called "Hey Ladies" by the Beastie Boys. Oh, it's for I, you guys. I wanted sabotage. Yeah, it was the only one. sabotage, man. It was the only one on here. Oh, oh fair enough. Anyway, <laughs> I, I'm gonna have to talk to <laughs> yeah. Annabella about that. <laughs> they, they took off my Green Day. I remember that it was all over the summer. I had that plan. I had Green Day, you know, Bang Bang, you know that song, Revolution yeah. Radio. Yeah. I had a lot I'd, of ra- that I'd rather not. I had a lot of that playing because it was the only Green Day available. And then all of a sudden I looked and it was gone. It was gone like a, gone like the Chargers' chance to win the Super Bowl. You know what oh, I'm yeah, saying? Oh, yeah, sorry about oh, that, dude. Thank God. It's okay. <clears throat> What'd she say? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just that look you gave me of just pure just contempt. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> what did you say? This is the first time I'm meeting you in person. <laughs> but all right, everybody. We're taking a quick break. And when we get back, we're talking about my top 10 movies of the year and all the pop culture goodness 2018, whether it be music, movies, TV, or whatever. Maybe celebrities. Maybe we'll talk a bit of a little bit of the celebrity gossip. Who knows? Who knows what to expect? So stay tuned, guys. Don't turn that dial. You're listening to 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. We'll be right back. And everybody, we're back here on 90.3 WMSC up in Montclair. You listen to the Digital Dash, hosted by me, Javier Reyes. The demons are out, everybody. I hope you're tucked in nice. Are you going to give him a new character and name? I'm not giving the name. It's me. It's not. It's Wolfman Reyes. You happy? Ooh. Ooh. Wolfman Reyes. See you, ladies and gentlemen. I like that a lot. And you know what else? You know what, what else? You know what else, Anthony? What? I'm excited. Oh, yeah? I'm real excited. Mm-hmm. If for those who don't know, Mr. Anthony DeGenero is here. Hey, what's up? And then Mr. Anthony Gavinelli. Hey. Yeah, you're <laughs> supposed to say hey. And for all you little, little, little chicks and chickens out there. Oh, I, don't like the, I, don't, I do not like how you said that. <laughs> I do not like that at all. <laughs> oh, you little Jesus, Jesus brother. Oh, brother. no, no, no. You, you, gotta, gotta, you need to drop that. You better do some skiing over here. Ski, <laughs> ski brother. Ski, brother. Get my cowboy hat out. Well, you know what, Anthony? If you didn't raise any attention to it, maybe people would have thought about it I that still, way. I okay? still feel like anyone who listened to that would have had a problem with it. I was, I had, you know, some Charlotte's Web on my mind, okay? Mm. <laughs> and I was thinking about the farm the world. Only person, okay? I, the still, only person in 2019 that... to ever have Charlotte's Web on their mind. <laughs> I, don't, yeah. I don't think anyone, yeah. <laughs> Turn up that dial, because for the next hour, we got about an hour left. We're talking about that pop culture, including the best movies of the year, including... Everything else in pop culture. You know what pop culture means. I don't need to tell you. I don't need to tell it. There's a definition. Look really, up it on Google. I really don't Do like this character. <laughs> Nobody does. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what's up, guys? What's going We've on? Been I'm back. For half an hour. <laughs> I got it. I got it. But, like, I wasn't here for a little bit. Remember that? Wolf, Wolfman Reyes yeah, he was he checked there. out oh, for a hot Yeah, day. so he's like, hey, well, hey, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, he's yeah. back. <laughs> it's a prime um, how, how could I have forgotten? I'm so sorry. I'm going to get fired over this. this I know you will. And, I can't, <laughs> and I'm going to laugh so hard. <laughs> I'm going to say something crazy, like what? that uncle at Thanksgiving type of crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah, dude. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, so 
where do you guys, how do you guys want to do this? Because I have my top 10 here. I wrote an article about it for my personal blog that people can check out if they want. But you guys are here now. So I'm thinking, Mr. Deej, do you want to perhaps go? Because you are the guest. And just sure. whether you want to quickly run through them, or are you okay with doing it quickly? Or uh, are you okay with us chiming in at every so, movie? Can I also, sure. say, can I I mean, also say that I don't have a list because I don't think I've mm-hmm. seen 10 movies this year? Yeah, so let's also say that Anthony, Mr. Gabs over here, because he does not have a list because he didn't see 10 movies somehow. Yet he calls himself the sports editor. <laughs> I know, that's, the, I know, I know. that's the point. That was the thing. Um, <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, Deej, you want to go through it rapid fire or do you want to just take it one um, at a time, whatever you want? Yeah, I mean, I was going to pretty much just, like, list them off and then give a brief description about why I like them. And, I mean, if you guys want to chime in, I mean, I'm sure, I, I'm sure there's movies you've I'm seen I'm really on curious my list, to see so. because this is an actual filmmaker, so he knows things. And I'm not a filmmaker, and I don't know things. So, therefore, I assume the lists are going to be quite different. So, I'm looking forward to this. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I, uh, so, I have some honorable mentions that I want to get through first okay. uh, that might may or may not uh, piss, uh, piss some people off. But mm-hmm. um, So, some honorable mentions I have is uh, I have the Dan Stevens-led, uh, I think, 19th or 18th century horror film, uh, Apostle, that came out around Halloween. Um, I'm a big fan of Dan Stevens, and I'm a big fan mm-hmm. of horror. And uh, pairing those two together, uh, it was a genius move in my opinion, and it's directed by the great, uh, I want to say, I I think it's Gareth Edwards. I I hope it's Gareth Edwards. It is, yes. It is Gareth Edwards. Okay, good. Because I I always get him. Gareth Evans, I'm sorry. Gareth Evans. Yeah. Because I always get mixed up between him and the guy who directed Rogue One and Godzilla. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. So, because I, I, I think they have like similar names, but um, yeah. So that was uh, a really great time. Very, uh, very atmospheric. Very uh, surreal. Uh, not too scary, but um, definitely had a lot of great um, unsettling imagery. Mm-hmm. Uh, some great of, cinematography. Yeah. Speaking of Dan Stevens, you know Dan Stevens from uh, Beauty and the Beast. He was the Beast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, uh, Legion. If you watch Legion on he's FX, also, no, he's also I did not watch. I watch um, I watched one I watched episode. The first episode I, just, yeah. I, I watched one episode. And I was just like, no. I was like, yes. No, it's <laughs> Let's get fantastic. Back to it. yeah, I was um, like, yes. What happened? No idea. Can't wait to watch it again. No, it's uh, yeah, Forgot it's fantastic. Love Legion. Um, and he's also in a movie that you and I both really like, The Guest. Oh, The Guest. Which, yeah, absolutely. Which no one has ever seen, but yeah. I love it. It's upsetting that nobody's ever seen The Guest. I think it's a fantastic mm-hmm. film. It used to be the on guest, Netflix. Huh? I don't think it is now, but yeah. you can find it on Hulu or other means. Whether it's like this is different than The Gift, right? It's, oh, much, yeah, it's much, much different. different. Okay. Than the gift. Yeah. okay. The um, gift, the guest, okay. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, Apostle, recommended. It's on Netflix, so you can watch it for free. If you got two two hours, then mm-hmm. go ahead and check it out. Uh, my next movie, my next honorable mention is uh, Upgrade, um, a movie that went this. super, super under the radar this yeah. year. Um, but that movie had no business being as good as it was. Yeah. Um, it's directed by Lee Whannell, who is a uh, longtime collaborator of James Wan, who just did mm-hmm. the recent Aquaman movie. Um, oh, Aquaman. I have some thoughts. Oh, I, we, oh I have some thoughts on Aquaman. Just oh, as we well, pass well, the, the top of the hour here on 90.3 WMSC for Montclair, um, talking about our favorite movies of the year and whatnot. Except for Anthony. He's not actually talking about it. Anthony oh. DeGeneres is talking about it because he's one of them smart boys. <laughs> and you're one of them sports boys. So you're a nerd. You know what I mean? Yeah. I said, do you know what I mean? You also <laughs> like sports. <laughs> No, I don't. What are you talking about? Uh, you just got mad at him for making fun of the Chargers yesterday. Oh, the by Chargers? the Chargers? I thought that was for oh, Chargers? Well, I've never... What? What is that? I don't what is a Chargers? What what's a football? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. oh is that okay. ye old pig skin <laughs> over there? <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, uh, so Upgrade, a movie that had no business being as good as it was, directed by Lee Whannell. Um, he wants great to to com- writer. My, my guy, I think he wants to go to commercial. No, oh, no, 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 I don't. No, I don't. No, no why are you looking at me like that then? Just the mess Yeah, so Upgrade, uh, very fun, some amazingly directed action sequences, uh, really great standout performance from Logan Marshall Green. Uh, highly recommend that. Um, my next movie is uh, Infinity War on my honorable this mentions. This is for honorable mentions, right? This is honorable mentions, yeah. Infinity War. Um, a movie that I was looking forward to for a very, very long time, ever since the MCU was a thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm not going to say I was disappointed with it, because I definitely wasn't disappointed with it. I just feel that um, it was too much movie. I feel like all the characters really weren't handled as well as I thought they could be. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like if it benefited from a three hour plus runtime, uh, unpopular opinion in these mm-hmm. uh, movie days, but uh, I feel like if it benefited from a three hour plus more uh, a long runtime, then I feel like um, it would have been more cohesive, more fleshed out. Um, and the snap didn't really do it for me. Mm-hmm. Um, the decimation, as it's called now. The decimation. Is mm-hmm. that what they're calling yep, it? Is that what the called. kids are calling that's it? That's what we're, they're, it's referred to in the movie universe. Really? Yeah, they call it the decimation. Interesting. 
Um, but yeah, um, I, I still thought it was a very, very good movie. Um, some great, very memorable sequences, obviously. Uh, some great performances for across the board. And uh, really looking forward to seeing what they're doing uh, this year with the uh, sequel. Mm-hmm. And, You'll be uh, hearing from me about Affinity War too, for sure. Absolutely. So I'll get into that. Uh, can't wait to talk about that. Um, the next one is uh, for my honorable mentions is Halloween, uh, the 2018 okay. reboot of the series. Um, Halloween is my favorite slasher movie of all time. Huge, huge Halloween fan. Even the really awful sequels. Um, but this one, I would say, is the second best Halloween movie. You know, uh, besides the first. Um, a really great performance from Jamie Lee Curtis. Some really interesting direction from uh, David Gordon Green. Um, a very, very interesting one take. Uh, I think that lasted like maybe 10 minutes uh, hmm. in the film, um, which I, I'm, all, I'm all about. I love yeah. one takes. I implement them. You're a filmmaker or something? Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I think okay, I'm... <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> um, yes, no, I'm a huge, I'm a huge fan of uh, um, long takes. Mm. Uh, I, I try to implement them as much as I can in my films. That's just my style. I love doing that. Uh, not to toot my own horn here, but um, yeah, but you saw that. I'm a it's huge like, uh, it's <laughs> like the second horror movie I've ever seen in theaters because I'm not a huge horror fan, but I enjoy myself thoroughly. Yeah, um, no, but. yeah, we had a, we had a really good time while watching it. So uh, Halloween, definite definite uh, must see in my opinion. Loved it. Um, and my last honorable mention is A Quiet Place. Uh, very interesting movie by a first, or not actually, actually not first time director, um, first horror uh, first horror film he's ever made. John Krasinski. Uh, What's I the think other thing that he did? Say? I forgot. He did a, a bunch of like uh, comedies. He did, I okay. think, The Hollers was one of right. them. Right, I've heard of this before. Which was like an all-star cast that went like super under the radar for mm. some reason. Uh, I okay. haven't seen it personally, but um, that's out there <laughs> if you're mm. interested. Um, uh, a Quiet Place. Uh, really great use of sound design in that film for a film that's mm. all about not being able to talk. Um, top ten movie experience for me this year. Really? Would be The Quiet Place. Not one of my top ten movies, but... When you're watching that movie in a theater with people, you're eating your popcorn like there's a velociraptor. Oh, you. absolutely. It's, it's really interesting crazy. stuff. I haven't yeah. had something like that in a while. Kept me on the edge of my seat mm-hmm. throughout. Um, really great film. Uh, for, if you're interested in sound design, highly recommend checking it out. Um, direction, everything else really wasn't all that standout um, mm-hmm. aside from the sound design. But uh, still, if you're looking for a nice, well-crafted horror movie that uh, has a really interesting premise uh, and uses that premise to its full potential... Uh, I highly recommend seeing um, A Quiet Place. Mm -hmm. Now to get to my top ten. Here we go. I'll just breeze through these with a short description. So number ten, I have Black Panther, uh, which I definitely think was the best superhero movie of the year. Um, A very landmark moment for African Americans and just black people across the world. Mm -hmm. Um, No need to say that because, you know, that's been... People know. People people know, know, of course. Mm -hmm. So a landmark moment for them. Uh, Some amazing direction from Ryan Coogler. Um in the action sequences and out of the action sequences. I'm a big Ryan Coogler fan, so it was really great to see him tackle something of this magnitude. Mm-hmm. Um, love the Michael B. Jordan, Killmonger, one of the best MCU villains, hands down. Uh, Chadwick Boseman is electric, charismatic in it. Uh, his sister, I don't know uh, her name. Shuri? Sure, I know yeah. Shuri, but I don't like oh, her actress. Oh, uh, Lucia Wright. Yeah, uh, yeah her. Uh, great in the film. Lupita Nyong'o gives a great performance in everything she's in. Love mm-hmm. her. Um, and just a great... Um, Nice spin on an origin, I guess, quote unquote, origin movie because mm. we already saw him in Civil War. But right. this really just, I love and he how he already it, is the Panther. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. So we skip all that, like, oh, I'm becoming the Panther now. Well, mm-hmm. we got most of that in Civil War, but I think in Civil War it was handed pretty mm-hmm. uh, briskly yeah. uh, and nicely. Um, mm-hmm. So it was really nice to see that um, him become a fully realized character in this film. I uh, mm-hmm. really like that. Uh, number nine, I have Isle of Dogs. Uh, Wes I'm Anderson. I'm so upset I haven't seen this. I'm so upset. It is a charming film. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wes Anderson's second stop motion film after Fantastic Mr. Fox. Another great film I highly recommend. Um, Isle of Dogs takes a lot of inspiration from Akira Kurosawa, one of my personal favorite directors, a uh, Japanese director who's made some of my favorite movies of all time. As, um, and like what? Uh, Ron, uh, Seven Samurai. Seven uh, Samurai, I've seen. What else has he made uh, that I really like? Uh, Dreams. A lot of people aren't like too hot on Dreams, but I think I love it. Um, just for its use of color alone, it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, some some great movies from him. One of the greatest directors who ever did it. Um, so Wes Anderson takes a lot of his style, implements it uh, in a stop motion aspect with dogs. Does he now? Yeah, yeah, dude. Really heartfelt story. Uh, great performances across the board from the cast. Huge fan of that film. Yeah, that's um, the thing with me is one of my hottest takes is I'm not sure how I feel about Wes Anderson. I, I, I've, sure. I've, I've been hearing this a lot recently because my, my my film professor, but, one of my favorite film professors, was like, "Yo, like Wes Anderson's a very annoying director." He's like, the thing with him is, to be fair, I haven't seen all of his movies. I've seen, I saw Moonrise of Kingdom like last year for the first time, and I don't know why, but I don't remember. I know I saw 
Grand Budapest Hotel, but I don't remember anything. Right. So we talk about why off air. Um, sure. And with Moonrise Kingdom, I was like, this is cool. Looks beautiful. I can't get over how literally no human being on this planet talks like this. Oh, that's like very his style. And I was like, like very idiosyncratic. It is a movie. I get it. But I was like, this is just a little much. I have never heard anyone talk anything remotely like this. Just hard to get immersed when I know that it feels too much like I'm playing a, a painting, a right. video game that's about a painting or something like that. I don't right. know how to explain it rightly, but no, uh, my jury is still out. I got to think about it. No, but, totally. Yeah. I mean, Wes Anderson is a very acquired taste. I would say yeah. he's a very uh, he's very easy to digest. But the once filmmaking you look... kids love him for sure. Oh no, absolutely. Yeah, Are you kidding him. me? They the amount of Wes people Anderson. I've heard say Wes Anderson is their favorite director is mm. astronomical. But mm. um. He's very he's he's a very easy director to to digest. But when you look into his films, there's a lot of subtext, and which I really appreciate about him. Um, and he's just got an eye for cinematography and set design and production design that I just really appreciate. Sure, um, that's so fair. Isle of Dogs, uh, cool film, highly recommend. Um, number eight, If Beale Street Could Talk. I haven't seen uh, it. Yet. I'm so upset. Infuriating film. Um, mm. Not from any like pacing issues or like it's hard to get through, but. Just the way these characters, yeah. oh, intentionally, uh, the way these characters are treated, a beautiful performance from Regina King, one of my favorites of the year, definitely top three. Um, she is electric in that film and everything about it. Barry Jenkins is becoming one of my favorite directors of all time. After Moonlight, I just, I, I, I that worship Moonlight him. Moonlight snuck up on me too. I infamously didn't love it when I first saw it. Then I uh -huh. saw it again randomly. I was like, oh my God. It's, it's art. I was like, it's, the, it's the closest he... you can get to art. Not because I'm not as fluent in the technical terms as you. He has an eye, I feel like, for capturing emotion out of just faces. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And just people staring. And yep. I don't know how you can actually do that. It doesn't really, I can't comprehend how that's possible. There's a lot of moments in Moonlight where it's like when he's the young, when he's younger, and then when he's like in school, and then when he's older. And I'm like, they're just staring at the camera. But, and that sounds, it sounds like super pretentious when you start talking about why no, that's man, cool. I, yeah, but it's I, really, Moonlight is disturbing it's a good. it's a work of art yeah like it's, it's incredible. hands down it, it, some of the best performances put the screen mm -hmm. hands down for and me. i wouldn't have minded if la la land won that year i thought la la land was pretty good too i thought la la land was, it was a uh, good i think it's a little overrated a um, little bit i think it was just fun to see a musical that people cared about mm -hmm. and they were like oh this is fun and i think that that is kind of an accomplishment within right. itself but yeah yeah uh and i just realized looking at my list that many of these like movies that i have are based off of performance like uh, mm -hmm. definitely like uh you know technical aspects and whatnot but i realized that like a lot of these movies that i have on here are solely or not solely based off performance but like performance was like a genuine highlight of the film uh so moving on uh number seven i have destroyer uh starring <laughs> okay. nicole kidman um brutal film okay I like it. Brutal film, hard to watch. Nicole Kidman, uh, Nicole Kidman, Nicole Kidman gives a standout performance, one of the best of her career. Uh, plays a cop who was wronged in the past, and now, uh, when an opportunity presents itself to make it right, she goes for it. She, her makeup job in that film is disgusting. Like she mm -hmm. looks gross. Like she looks worn out. She looks weathered. Mm -hmm. um, and the performance reflects that. And Karen Kurosama, who directed the film, uh, I'm a very mixed bag on her. And uh, the, her direction in this film is a very mixed bag as well. But I think the story, um, cinematography, Nicole Kidman's performance all outweigh the problems that I have with her direction. So uh, Destroyer, awesome film. Highly mm -hmm. recommend it. Uh, number six, I have Annihilation with uh, Natalie Portman, uh, Tessa Thompson. Now, now you're speaking my language. Na Annihilation <laughs> now you're was. I read, you, no, because I read your thing, oh, yeah. uh, your movies list. And my God, that movie's a trip. It is. It is. It, it is how he got funding for that movie is yeah. beyond me. I think he got it just because of Ex Machina. And just, they were like, I'm yeah, serious, go do whatever like, you want. And then they were like, wait, what are you doing? Yeah, it's like, what are you doing? When yeah. I said whatever you want, I didn't mean like whatever you wanted. Yeah, that yeah. movie is like, takes symbolism, th theme, like, and weaves it all together with just incredible visuals and incredible score. I honestly don't know how he did what he did in that film. Like, and I honestly don't know, even barely know what happened. I, I, get it I now. I'm still wrapping my head around. And I'm it. Like, like, what the heck? I mean, the end, like last like 20 minutes of that movie is just a little, I don't even know how to describe it. It's kind of like if you took, it's like if you went flying into the sun, but we're still alive and you were seeing what it looked like to be in the middle of the sun. It's like what you're see it's like if you're standing in the middle of the universe yeah. and you're just looking out and you're not dying or anything and you're not you're dying just like you're looking. just experiencing and whatever's like, happening. Yeah, like I felt like her, uh the person. 
in that scene. Like, oh, I yeah. felt like I was Absolutely. like, that was, I was like, whoa. There like, was like, it's ridiculous. An insurmountable amount of dread that I had yeah. with the last like half hour of this yeah. film that was it's captivated me like, It's an experience. Wow. It's an experience. It's incredible. Um, nice. Annihilation. Uh, number five, I have Mission Impossible Fallout. One of the funnest action, one of the funnest, I guess, yeah, is the word. Most fun. Whatever. Most fun. One of the most fun movies I've seen in a very long time. Had a blast. Saw it with this kid right here. Saw it mm-hmm. with a bunch of our friends. Had a blast in the theater. Um, Tom Cruise, charismatic and awesome and funny as always. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of the best action sequences ever put to film, hands down. Especially in that series, I would Especially say. Especially sure. in that series, yeah. I mean, it, it's incredible to see how Mission Impossible is a series that just keeps one-upping yeah. on itself mm-hmm. throughout. It's um, become the thing where, like, every movie, it's what's the gimmick almost. What, not exactly. the gimmick, but, like, the gimmick too, but also they always have one set piece that they advertise a lot. So yeah. it's like Ghost Protocol was like the tower, yeah. right? And then Rogue Nation was like the bike thing to a degree, but also the plane thing at the very beginning of the movie. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then this one, it's like, honestly, everything. Everything. But like the jump at the Halo jump, the chase sequence, the fight in the bathroom, which is ridiculous. I feel like, I feel like, it, was, I feel like it was that more than anything. The bathroom fight? Yeah, yeah. the bathroom fight. The bathroom fight, really I think, was wasn't marketed. advertised, though. It wasn't like the marketed one where they're going to be like, that's our moment. But it, I think it turned out to be like the, one of the standout moments of the movie. It looks beautiful too. Oh, yeah. oh man. Oh Just, man. Mission it, Impossible. It, it really... Tom Cruise. I love him. Yeah. I'm all, I'm all in on Tom Cruise. <laughs> Me too. Man. I, I love Tom Cruise. He's great. Uh, he's a little weird, but he's great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, I know uh, nothing but greatness from Tom Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the thing is with Mission Impossible, like real quick, um, it really just like, it's kind of like a. Uh, what are they going to do next? You know, like, mm-hmm. is this, like, how can they top it? Like, mm-hmm. is the series going to end? Like, what's, mm-hmm. like, what's the deal? Um, but yeah, moving on. Uh, number four is You Were Never Really Here by Lynn Ramsey. Another one of my this personal favorite directors. This is with, uh, Phoenix, right? Joaquin Phoenix gives, um, top I three why performance. I didn't see this. I remember, like, about to buy a ticket and something came up. I remember this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So when you say top three performance, like, of his career? Of his career. Of, like, of the year. Of his career. Oh. And of the year. And wow. Absolutely, of his career. Um, I, my personal favorite Joaquin Phoenix performance is The Master, uh, but that's, that's another thing. That's a tough movie to that talk about. That is a tough movie to talk about. That's, uh, that is like one of those that if someone tells me they really didn't like it, I'm like, I get it. I totally get it. <laughs> and that, like The Lobster, which I have to see still, mm-hmm. I've heard that's like similar where it's one of those movies that's like, I really didn't like it. Fair. I loved it. Fair. <laughs> like it's one of those that's yeah, just that, no, that, that what the thing is with the lobster, Yorgos Lantimos is like that's his entire Ooh, filmography. Rob, Rob's getting excited right mm-hmm. now if he's still listening. Is Rob he, loves yeah, it. Is he Greek? He, Rob, no, Rob no, he Rob loves is, he Rob loves, loves lobster. Film. Yeah, oh, and he loves, loves all the movies loves basically. Oh, yeah. He's like your type of guy. I'm oh, like yeah? a weird cool. mixture of tastes. I'm weird. I don't know what my movie tastes are. You know you're weird. <laughs> oh, do you? Oh, yes. uh, no, he's back, brother. <laughs> Ski, um, brother. Ski, brother. I'm going to do my sh- new show-mo in that voice. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> when I make my new show-mo for the thing, like, mm-hmm. hey, tune in, everybody. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the Wolfman voice. And oh, I'll be yeah. wearing my glasses while I record it, too, just to get into character. Big fan. But anyway. Uh, yeah, Lorgos Lantimos, his entire filmography is like that. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you were never really here. Uh, yeah, you were never really here. Uh, great film. Uh, Lynn Ramsey really just uh, goes... Uh, balls to the wall with it she is um absolutely a, a huge talent to watch um uh, i mean she's been around for a while now but mm-hmm. uh joaquin phoenix really is the standout in this film gives a di- just a, a disheveled broken performance that really shows just how grief stricken his character is uh mm-hmm. it's a really great meditation on grief and how we deal with it mm-hmm. and post-traumatic stress disorder um, and stuff like that. So he, yeah, he is a broken man in this film, and it really, it really shows. Are you in on Joker? Um, no. I'm starting to be I'm in not. on it. <laughs> I'm starting to be in on it because I think we're not paying attention to the people in it. I'm just like, what if it's good? I'm having one of those like, wait, what if it's good though? Scorsese's part of it. Sazzy Beats, who I love, is part of it. I've got someone else I'm forgetting about right Robert now. Robert De Niro. Like, uh, De Niro, thank you. De Niro's in it. I'm like. I don't know. That's a lot of big people to be in a movie that might be a cash grab, potentially. You know what I mean? Like, we're like, yeah. oh, go make Joker again, because apparently they think that that's the only villain that can work from that universe. But I was like, I don't know, it's man. Not like a, it's not a cinematic universe kind of movie, either. No. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's own thing. I don't know, man. I'm, which is why I'm I think really it might, which I think it, why it will work. Maybe it'll be like a Logan thing where they basically pretend that the other movies almost don't happen. Yeah. But mm. spiritually, they've happened. Where, like, you can just imagine Batman existing, but they're never going to mention him. They filmed that in Newark, actually. Some of that in Newark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. I'm curious about that. But, yeah, Me go too. On. Um, so, yeah, top three now. We have uh, num- number three. We have Mandy. 
uh, okay. with Nicolas Cage. Okay. Did you see it? No, but I've heard of it. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. It, That's it's, an interesting it's my choice. it's my film. It's the film that I want to make eventually. Just I've heard a lot of things about this I movie. L- adore this film so much. You mm-hmm. have an amazing performance from Nicolas Cage. And not like the kind of Nicolas Cage where like he's the good, like... Bad. like no, not like the good, bad Nicolas Cage. Like an actual good Nicolas Cage performance. Wow. In this film. Like, okay. as rare as those are. Like, yeah. like a Leaving Las Vegas Leaving kind Las of Nicolas Vegas Cage thing? performance. Oh, he's, no. He's told me to watch this for months now. I still haven't watched it I I'm adore this Demba. film. I like it. What was the one that I... I heard there's something called the... Some, it's like the... I'm going to find it really quickly. It's um, <laughs> something my sister told me I need to see it immediately. And when she says that, it means that it's real bad, but in the best way possible. <laughs> it's the – hold on. Let me find it real quick. Where, this is like my list of movies to see. It's something Bureau, Humanity Bureau. Oh, the Humanity Bureau. I've heard I've of heard that. like you got to watch it immediately. I've heard it's awful. Yeah, yeah, I know. I can't wait. Speaking of which, wait. to segue for a little bit, what's mm-hmm. everybody's favorite bad movie? Uh, like so bad never it's back down is the first thing that always comes to mind. Never <laughs> back down. <laughs> favorite bad movie. It's the movie? Karate Kid, yeah, but like done favorite, by like... someone who they. It's done by someone who oh, wanted is... to make the Karate Kid for younger a younger new generation, but they got someone who was sixty five to do it. Like, <laughs> that's what the Never Back Down is, and it's <laughs> glorious. So a movie that I think that like is that is just bad that I like is awful, but oh. you like love watching it. Uh-huh. Honestly, mm-hmm. X Men Origins Wolverine. Like, really? it's, it's really? just like whenever it's on TV, it's just like you know He's what? Doing the same. I could, I could, I could just, I could watch. This. I know what you're doing. This, this is fine. I know what you're doing. What? He thinks that Logan, X Men Origins, Wolverine, and the Wolverine are all equally good or bad, whatever way. They're all the same level. I, I did not. I just realized Logan's that, the best out I, of the three. I just, like, let's re- be real I just realized that. Fact. I just wrote that poster has a has a cuss word on it. In the top corner there. That's a great band, by yeah. the way. Um, just listen, just throw that. Great is, is the band name what's on top or on the bottom? The band name is on top. Okay, that's their most recent album. Okay. Okay. Can't um, say that. Anyway, um, so what had happened was, I had fun <laughs> watching the movies. The first two. Uh huh. And by far, I I still think three is the best one out of all of them. Mm-hmm. I don't think I like it as much as everyone else. Mm-hmm. That's a. That's Not a, everyone loves it. I loved it. It was my favorite movie last year. Yeah. But, yeah. But. Yeah, I think that's my favorite bad movie. Yeah. Mine is uh, Teen Witch. Oh, that, yeah. We, <laughs> I, I, dude, like, when I tell you I'm a Teen never Witch back stan. Down, like, Teen Witch and X-Men Origins Wolverine. <laughs> no, it's funny because the first time I've ever, I ever saw Teen Witch, it was my, my sis, I was with my sister at home, and we pulled the couch out into the middle of, like, the living room floor and just watched Teen Witch at, like, 1.30 in the mm-hmm. morning. And it was one of, like, my favorite memories that I've ever yeah. had with my sister and with any human being ever. And it's just, like... Teen Witch is just like this, th- like there's inklings of like a really like funny like high school teen comedy in there, but it's just so outweighed by like these mm. outlandish musical numbers oh, and like these, comedies. I'm in. Like it's, I'm in. It, it, it's it's incredibly awful. Like it's what about things is anything that has to do with high school, school, and like coming of age. I'm in immediately. Oh, I've yeah? seen all of them, <laughs> bro. I've seen like Paper Towns. I'll see it. I'm oh, Paper Towns. I don't like it, yeah. but I'm in. I'm in. Like, all right, let's do I'm it. In, let's I'm do it. Let's so, go. did you like The Edge of Seventeen then? Oh, I love Edge of, the 17 Edge of Seventeen. Is a masterpiece. That like, I love brilliant. that film. Yeah. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, going back to Mandy, uh, I- I'm gonna like. I don't want to like talk too much about it because like, right. the less you know about it, the better. Incredible performances, amazing cinematography, amazing art design, amazing sound design, amazing soundtrack. I adore this film. See it. Mm-hmm. Uh, number two, a film that hit me to my core, mm. like straight up ruined me, like put mm. me in the ringer and spit me back out. I one of the only movies in my entire life that as soon as it was over, I watched it again. Uh, mm. Roma. Interesting. Uh, okay. I, this is my number eleven. I like I, when I, I like when I tell you everything I want to be as a filmmaker is in Roma. Mm-hmm. It's in Roma. Like Alfonso Cuaron. Is that how you say it? Yeah. Cuaron. 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 Yeah. Okay. Uh, Children of I'm Man. I'm just gonna call him Harry Alfonso. Potter, yeah. yeah. I'm just gonna call him Alfonso. Mm-hmm. What Alfonso does with this film is one of the most personal, one of the most in in like enthralling, thrilling. Mm-hmm. films that i've seen in it's, a very long time I, I literally hate this term but it's a human story it's my oh my no. most hated uh it's that's a very that pretentious use. thing but yeah, like I it is a it. very human story mm-hmm. like it Grounded, is about yeah. one person going through life in 1970s mexico amongst the political turmoil that really interestingly takes like a super back seat until like the last like yeah third it really of does the movie. It, like the second third or whatever has a point 
Yeah. They, I think they mention it, and yeah. then it happens, and then and it you're happens, like, Whoa. and you're like, oh my god. And then, and then yeah. it leaves for a bit, yeah. and then it goes back to just her. It's, yeah. like, really interesting. I didn't love the movie when I saw it. Uh-huh. Um, I've been thinking about it. I appreciate it. I can't – I don't understand why it didn't impact me with the emotional moments that we won't spoil right. regarding her and something about, her, you know, that happens to her. Yeah. And oh, just yeah, they, you it know, didn't you hit know for scene. some reason. And I don't know why. I was like, I bet this is the scene everyone's talking about. It just didn't hit me. I don't know why. Um, I'm still trying to figure that out. But this could also – one of my other things with movies is like they hit – It sometimes it's like it's my third watch when it hits for me. Like mm-hmm. Moonlight was my second when I hit. Right. Um, I didn't hate Rome or anything like that. I was just like – it was good. It was right. good. I no, enjoyed I totally it. totally get you. You know? Uh-huh. Um, yeah. Uh, love Roma. So I want to see this movie, mm-hmm. but then he told me I have to read the movie. And I don't like reading my anime, so no. <laughs> I'm not going to put my effort into that. I see what you're doing again. You're making fun of me, bud? No. I, I'm, I just, I literally said. fun of me, I, When he told me I had to read the movie, I literally said the same thing. Well, dude, it's a, it's a Spanish film. Like, I understand, uh, but, like, again. You're doing yourself a disservice if you don't experience this movie. That's all I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I if you like film, if you like film, if you're about and I do, film, but I don't think I'll enjoy it as much as everyone if I have to it's read pronounced it. Pronounced Quaron. Shout out to my dad. Quaron. Yeah. Okay, shout cool. out to my dad. <laughs> Quaron. Cool. Mm, anyway. Love it. Love that film. And my number one movie of the year, uh, a here we movie go. Wait, that. Wait, wait. Oh yeah, you want a little, little drum roll yeah, here? Let's uh, go for it. My number one film of the year, a film that um, made me physically ill. Like, I'm not even kidding. Like, halfway through the film, I paused it. I went into the bathroom. I washed my face. And I just, like, sat there for, like, a hot minute just to, like, comprehend what I was seeing. And half the movie, I still had half the movie to go. Mm-hmm. Um, Hereditary. I've uh, heard, I, the thing with Hereditary is, I've heard there's a thing that happens. Oh, there, oh there's, there's a, a thing that happens. That happens, and you're either in or out. It's one of those. No, it, it, yeah, it's definitely a fight or flight moment. It's like, like absolutely. That's when it just hits a point, and apparently not like a super scary movie until the ending. It's mostly just like creepy. Yeah, no. But then it becomes, yeah. oh my gosh, like I'm can't sleep. It's an I, exceptionally atmospheric film. Yeah. yeah. Someone wanted to watch this movie with me, mm-hmm. and I'm like, no, I heard it was scary. I kind of <laughs> want to watch it now. <laughs> Because I'm gonna keep no, here. it was scary. I like, like the way he said that. Because again, I I've only seen two horror movies in theaters. One was It Follows. I loved it. Yeah. And the other one was mm-hmm. Halloween that he had mentioned, and I liked it a lot. But uh, yeah, Hereditary was one that I heard was super was super scary. Mm. So I just said no. But now I keep hearing people talk about how good it is. Mm. And now that you guys said that the only the end is the scary part, the last no. like, act I've heard. No. All right. I've just heard that that's like when it just kicks off. In the it, that's when it. Overdrive. That's when it like. That's when it like. You that's know, when goes, it becomes like, goes like into high gear. But we're like we're gonna talk about throughout. this part for the re- for like a long time. The rest of the movie really? is just like is that... good. I've heard like we're gonna talk about the end twist thing. I wouldn't say. I wouldn't say the really? end. I would say the middle. Not the point. end. I mean like the, the. Apparently there's something. It's like remember Iron Man three. This yeah. is just an analogy where it's like something happens in that movie where you're either in or out. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, with yeah. the Ben Kingsley's uh, yeah. Mandarin character. Mm-hmm. That's why I've, I've kind of like my analogy for it, where it's like yeah. there's it's like latter third of it or what, something like that, where it's like there's a scene that happens that yeah. you're either in or out. I would say the scene. I, I would say the like scene that. we're talking to. Uh, I would say the scene we're talking about happens midway. Okay, midway. Um, but the ending is definitely something we're going to be talking about because there's a lot to unpack. Um, but Hereditary, Tony Collette's best performance, hands down criminal that she didn't get nominated for any at, at anything for yeah i've heard a lot of that criminal. I've, heard that. I've heard that yeah she she goes all in she mm. is all in F- the physicality the emotional like rawness like just everything about her performance is mm. in, 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 remarkable um nice so, so hereditary yeah. is number one man hereditary is number I one appreciate it yeah. all right but, ladies and gentlemen, now everybody knows what they really want to listen to. They want to know what my top ten is. You know, honestly, if they I'm, haven't read it honestly, I'm su- was Sp- Spider-Verse wasn't anywhere on there? No, I, I mean, Sp- I like, you said you love that movie. I did, I did love it. It's I hard, did man. love Spider-Verse. It's hard Spider-verse. making these lists, man. Trust it, me. It really is hard making these lists. But when I when I look back and I and I look at the amount of fun that I've had with, like, all of these movies and how mm-hmm. they've impacted me and how they've been, how they were made and stuff like that. I, I mean, I would probably put, I, I, I probably should have put Spider-Verse on my honorable mentions because it definitely mm-hmm. was my animated film of the year. Um, well, wait, Isle of Dogs is there. <laughs> well, I, I guess I'm just a talentless hack, boys. Like, there, there, it, <laughs> there it is. Well, now, yeah, Spider-Verse you, is definitely on there. Uh, definitely, might be, might be my favorite superhero movie, like, ever. Well, it's honestly, a take. It's a take. I know I, I should have it's put it on. Like I made this list at like three in the morning and I was like <laughs> struggling to like put stuff on here. Uh, yeah. I, I I mean, I really do like Spider-Verse. Like I, I really do like it. I, but all those films, I feel like 
I just had a better time experiencing. That's fair. You know what I mean? All right. So. But. Yeah. Everybody that's listening right now, don't you turn that dial. We're taking a quick break here on 90.3 WMSC up on Montclair. And when we get back, we're going through me. Or not me. The other guy, Javier. I'm Wolfman. All right, I'm Wolfman Ray. You suck. And then we're getting, <laughs> when we get back, we're talking about his top 10 movies of the year. And then going through the rest of your pop culture. It's the Diddle Dash. You're on 90.3 WMSC. Upper Montclair. Stay tuned. All right, everybody. What's up? We're back, yeah. I surprised. I, I surprised the Deej. I surprised him. Oh, we're back, I guess. We're back. Here on 90.3 WMSC up in Montclair. I hope you didn't turn that dial. I hope you're still listening. I hope you're all warm and this fuzzy. This character is gross. This character he's is a, gross. He's a skeevy individual. He is. And he needs, he needs, he needs hunger. He's hungry. <laughs> he's hungry for some movie takes. So, Javier, why don't you take it over from here? This is 90.3 WMSC. Oh, no, 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 no. And yeah, so I'm back. <laughs> we're talking my favorite movies. I decided to just not wait for Gabs because we're running out of time to a degree. We have a half an hour left. But so we, we have time, but I just want to get right into it, especially since you two have heard mine already. You've read it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, everyone, like I said, you know, I don't want to get into it right now, but you can check it on my social media and all that stuff. So number 10, I put Game Night. Um, I was struggling between this and Roma, but I decided I just feel like this movie was more fun and Roma didn't hit with me as much as I thought it would. I wish I saw Roma before I heard it was good. Maybe that might have made me like it more, but I don't know. Sometimes the expectation thing, and that's one of the things with Game Night, where it was a movie that I was like, oh, cool. Kyle Chandler's in here. This is great. I'm excited. I love him. You Kyle Chandler's the best me. human. Yes, I did. You started with <laughs> As that is Mr. Anthony Gavin. Javier, yelling. eat my shorts, but don't eat my shorts because <laughs> I can't say shorts. what I want you to eat on radio. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm protected over here, man. You see? I'm like I'm like a ruler. When yeah, I'm he's like in his here. zone right now. I'm in his zone. That. But... Game night. As soon as you get out of here, though, it's gonna be different. <laughs> game, game night, a movie that feels a lot like a satire of old, like kind of maybe 1980s, I guess, type of. I wrote like David Fincher style stuff, you know what I mean? Where it kind of feels like a parody of things. Jesse Plemons is also in this movie, which I didn't mention earlier, and he has some of the funniest like looks I've ever seen. There's just a lot of moments in this movie that I was like, this is fun, and it's so it's it's it shouldn't work nearly as much as it did. I thought it was gonna be one of those cheesy R-rated comedies that drops on like. A Friday when everyone's on vacation and nobody talks about it ever again. But in fact, Jason Bateman, just weird to me. Always been a weird actor. I never understand what he's going to do next. Did you do honorable mentions too? I didn't hear that. No, I didn't do honorable mentions. Okay. I, I, I mentioned Roma was one that almost made it for me. Okay. Um, and who knows, it might make it later. But it just mm-hmm. didn't quite do it for me. But yeah, Game Night, I really recommend that one. If you, if you It's a good, fun watch with a bunch of people, and I just really enjoyed it. Number nine, I put Avengers Infinity War. So Mr. Deej, he, he talked about this before in his honorable mentions. For me... Infinity War is so flawed in a lot of ways with some of the character decisions I think they make. I think they have a lot of the similar Marvel issues, especially when it comes to the timing of humor, where they have some really funny lines in this movie, and everyone laughs. But then they also have some lines where you're like, why did you add humor here? One of them being the Rocket Raccoon and Thor scene, which I thought was super emotional, and it really like I thought Hemsworth was doing great there. And then Rocket makes a joke, and I'm like, all right, like feels like kind of ruined it a little bit, you know what I mean? And I feel like Marvel, like, suffers with that, where it's almost like they don't want you to take them them too seriously, but they want to be taken seriously. I don't know how to explain that, where it's like, yeah, yeah, we're super serious about this, but also we're, we're not. Don't worry, don't worry. This we is a get movie, it too. It's a movie you know? I feel that I could have done with a lot less humor. Yeah, I Especially think so, like too. Especially ha- with, like, what's going on, what's yeah. at stake. Mm-hmm. But I just came around, and I was like, bottom line is it's fun, and bottom line is, I have not. I don't think there's ever been a movie like this in the sense that yeah. every A-lister in Hollywood, not literally every A-lister, mm-hmm. you got all these people. You have Marvel characters. Yeah, cool. You have Spider-Man there. Yeah, okay, Captain America. But then you have the Guardians of the Galaxy, and you just think about how impressive just an achievement that is and the fact that it is cohesive at all. It's definitely you know I mean? a, a cultural phenomena. Oh, yeah. absolutely. And the fact that like it was done so well. Is mm-hmm. just it it it, it it was worth the ten years I think mm. of, of yeah. waiting. Yeah, absolutely. it's just it's a greatest hits album. That's how I would describe yeah. it, and it's just fun. And you get like the little if you're a big dorky comic book fan like I am, and you really love these characters, oh, yeah. and you're not one of those annoying critics. Um, you know, you get it. Like you get like yeah, this is kind of cool, and it's just amazing that I am watching a movie where Thor mm-hmm. is talking to a tree, Groot, mm-hmm. and everyone's like, oh yeah, that's Groot. Like, everybody's in on it somehow, that we've been convinced, and we like the Guardians of the Galaxy, it's just crazy to me, and that we like Iron Man as much as we do, and we like all these people, um, and that Wakanda's involved, and it's just really cool to see 
all these characters mesh in a, well, in a way that doesn't always work, but the fact that it works at all is just truly an incredible achievement and nothing that Hollywood's ever seen before, whether cho- people choose to acknowledge that or not. Number eight, moving on, is Annihilation. Deej talked about this. I don't have much else to add. There's a scene in this movie, though, that I keep thinking about, besides the ending, and it involves a creature that's kind of stalking them. Oh, yeah. And the thing about that scene is it was disturbing and scary, not because of the creature for me, but because of the other person who, like, you know, I don't want to spoil too much about the movie, who thinks differently than them, and their reasoning behind why they aren't with the group anymore. And it's just so real and raw and scary to think about how that person might be right from their perspective, and you get why they did what they did. I don't know. It's like an insane person trying to rationalize that they know they might be crazy. That's how I would describe that. You know what I mean? And just hearing that rationalization of what they're doing was really disturbing. It's like Joker. You know what I mean? A Joker rationalizes his insanity. Something like that. Albeit to a much different genre and totally different landscape and whatnot. Um, But yeah, I love Annihilation. It's a beautiful looking film, at least. Even if you don't like it, which I understand if people don't like it, I do think it's worth a watch because you definitely haven't seen anything like that from most sci-fi movies, especially the past like few years. Mm -mm. Um, For sure. And I know my dad's a big fan of sci-fi, so I definitely recommend him checking that out. If he's still listening, which I think he is. Um, number seven, probably the, the most me, the most, what Javi, what are you doing? Take that I have on here, which is set it up the Netflix rom-com, um, starring Glenn Powell and Zoe Deutsch. I love Zoe Deutsch, which is, um, I think I was the only one heading into this movie that was like, I'm really excited for it because I think she's one of the most interesting young actors or actresses that we have just both. Um, she has a level of charm that I haven't really seen where she just looks like a, like a pal, like that you know, and is super cool. And she's had a weird like kind of set of movies, you know. What I mean, she does. She was more known from that Vampire Academy thing from like 15 years ago, based off the popular like young adult series or whatever. Then she does Before I Fall, like this super high grossing indie movie. Then she's in Everybody Wants Some, Why Him, which has not aged well at all with James Franco. Um, <laughs> not aged well at all. What that movie's about. And then movies like this, you know, set it up. And then Flower, which is another one I saw this year, which was extremely provocative, but she has a great performance in it. And this movie, I just thought it was very simple. It's just a rom-com about two people. But it's a rom-com that shows you the power of what happens when you have two movie stars you never knew about. And that's what I love about Set It Up, is it's two people that you didn't know you liked so much. And you probably will like both of them after this movie. And they're probably going to be involved in a lot more in the future. Anyway, I've seen this movie way too many times. Also, Pete Davidson's in it, and he's actually pretty funny. Like, he's, like, he plays this gay guy that's, like, super, like, Pete Davidson-y. And it's just funny. Like, I don't know. He has, like, a couple scenes in the movie, and he's great. Um, next up on my list, a movie that I think has gotten a little bit too much um, criticism for the ending of the movie. I get it, but I think that the first hour of it is borderline Hall of Fame-esque. I haven't, like, seen a better stretch from a movie in a long time, and that's A Star is Born. Um, up to the the rendition of Shallow, the original song from the movie. I also think this movie is a tremendous achievement. Bradley Cooper would be the person I'd like to see best actor, not necessarily based on performance. He was great in the movie too, but just when I look at performances, I like to look at how many things are they doing. This is my problem with, not to get too movie right now, but Allison Janney last year, tremendous, tremendous actress, obviously. But I felt like she kind of did that thing we know Allison Janney does. She's She's being super like, you know, this or whatever, and she's got a cigarette or whatever, and she's doing her Alice and Janey kind of thing. And I thought Laurie Metcalf from Lady Bird, which was also one of my favorite movies last year, she did a lot of different things in her performance. She had to be emotional. She had to be vulnerable. But she also had to be funny and strong and, like, tough and dismissive. Like, she just, just I felt there were more characteristics with her and why I thought she should have won. And with Bradley Cooper, he directs the movie. He is starring in the movie, and he's also doing vocal performances, and he's got the accent. I just think he's doing so much in this movie that I'd be kind of cool. I think it'd be really cool to see him take home the best actors thing. Although I am a little bit surprised by how much Star is Born seems to be just getting kind of swept under the rug when it comes to the critic shows. Like, I thought it was going to be between that and Roma, just based off early talks. I thought it was going to be between those two. Um, And I also love it when a movie is popular, it's in the cultural zeitgeist, everyone's talking about it, and it's also just critically and artistically merited as this piece that just works on a variety of levels. I know the ending kind of falls off a little bit. It doesn't get as, it's not as interesting when you see her when the star is born, you know what I mean? It's not necessarily seeing her post, like 
when she's a star, it's that's not quite as interesting. But and I have some problems with the commentary about why what happens to Bradley Cooper has happened, why it happens, which I won't get into on the show because I've talked about it before. Um, but I just think that 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 scene of shallow being played is just electric. And the two of them, I don't think this movie should have worked nearly as it should have, which is a common theme that I've mentioned so far. Number five, same rankings you had, Mission Impossible Fallout. It's just so fun. And I wrote about how me and my dad, we were just laughing. Not because it was funny, but because of how brilliant everything that's happening on screen is. We're like, I cannot believe this. Look at what I, like, especially like the last like 10, 15 minutes of the movie where it escalates. It does that action thing where it's like, oh, but now this is happening. And now this is happening. Now this is happening. And it just keeps doing that to a point where I remember the director, um, McGuire, I forgot his name. Christopher McGuire. Christopher McGuire. He campaigned for we should have a best stunt award at the oscars forget this popular movie thing we should talk about stunts and i wholeheartedly agree i think that there should be something for that and i think people who act like stunts and action sequences are not real film or they're not part of human stories don't actually know what they're talking about and that we should have something about that because it's not like you get breaking news the action sequences in avengers for me are not nearly as good as mission impossible fallout they look cool and it's awesome that we can even do that on screen but there's nothing like that that's practical all, that's, yeah that's the all halo jump, you know what i mean stuff, yeah and that would be different avengers wouldn't be in that category this would be stuff like the raid this would be stuff like mission impossible stuff like john wick exactly. and i think you should um award film that have made the achievement of, of action and whatnot and for people who think that that's just all budget based go see the raid and go see some other movies. And to, I don't know what the budget for John Wick was. But I just think that you cannot disregard every aspect of movies that isn't drama and camera work and whatnot. You know what I mean? You also have to pay attention to the fact that it's hard to direct good action sequences. What was the – just that brought up another thought. What was the budget on Judge Dredd? Or just oh, that Dredd? was like $500,000. Not, 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 <laughs> not, 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 like, not like the Stallone one, but the one yeah. – like, like I said, $500,000. Also, probably. underrated I thought movie. it was like $30 million. Oh, ex- exceptionally really? underrated movie. Yeah, that movie is – That movie is raw. written – That movie That's is written raw movie, by yeah. – uh, That movie is written by the guy who directed Annihilation and Ex Machina. It's, it's Dread, by the way. That's the difference. Judge Dread was yeah. Dread yeah. one, then Dread. Um, but yeah, that movie unfortunately didn't make a lot. Um, yeah. But yeah, moving on to my number four pick. It's Black Panther. You mentioned this before. I just feel like Black Panther is the perfect cross of artistically merited and like more of a what everyone saw. Just because people have seen the movie does not mean that it is bad or it is mainstream or boring or mundane or what have you. I thought Black Panther touches on so many areas, whether it be acting, whether the award shows refu- like want to acknowledge that or not. Breaking news, there were great performances in this movie. Um and I think that shows, since they aren't talking about the acting in this movie, it shows that they really don't respect it and they're only giving it kind of award recognition because they don't want the backlash, which I don't know why. You have like 10 slots. Relax. Um, and I thought that it succeeds as like a spy movie at points. It succeeds at as a social commentary with themes of, you know, kind of this native kind of uh, uh, isolationism and, rever- you know, reverse colonialism and all that type of stuff. And also has a villain who... At first, I thought the performance was a little bit over the top, but then I looked at it and I thought Michael B. Jordan actually played this different type of character that was supposed to be wild and crazy to not not crazy as like not smart and like kind of ooh, but more in a way that was just this person had bad things happen to them and they should have been where the Black Panther T'Challa is, but they were I think the movie was trying to say they were Americanized in, a, in the bad way where a lot of bad things befall this character and you get it. And he's basically kind of like the Magneto of that MCU, where you get it and you understand, is what he's doing necessarily good? No. Uh, What he wants to do, not good either, but you get it. And I think that the movie captures that brilliantly. I think it works as a comic book movie, spy movie, an acting movie, just world building. I thought Black Panther is one of those movies that I can't really understand if someone didn't like like it. I don't understand what – I mean, I can't understand some reasons why people don't like it, but (laughs) – uh, it's a cultural phenomenon, and definitely one of the movies that I'd say, looking back, we're going to be like, yeah, remember when that happened? Because that was a big thing. Uh, more so, in a way, than Avengers Infinity War. I know that was a bigger movie, but I think that Black Panther we're going to talk about for a long time. Number three, just going to try and speed it up just a little bit. Minding the Gap, probably my most unknown movie out of all of the ones on the list. is a documentary that is about skateboarders. No, I'm just kidding. It's not really about that. It's more about adolescence, and it is – I've said this word a lot for some reason – but it is raw and is unrelenting in its subject matter. But it captures adolescence in a way that's real, and it's not – It's not. I don't know how to put this. 
it's really not there's no there's no romanticization of it you know what i mean of this lifestyle of not knowing what you want to do and having this these type of characters and bad people around you and i really don't know how to really describe this movie quickly enough and in a succinct enough way so i'm just going to move on um but i really recommend that one and i really struggled with my number one this year it was between these last two ended up going this direction number two spider-man into the spider-verse talked about spider-man ad nauseum on the show as you probably know Mm -hmm. um he's my favorite fictional character ever i love him and i thought that this movie did some i did i had no idea that the conversation about this movie that we'd be having is wow that might just be one of the best movies of the year Forget superhero, forget animated, forget all these genres and boxes that we like to separate genre movies into. It was just so well done, and I had no idea. I had no idea. I was like, this will be fun. I'm excited because I like Spider-Man. And I wasn't expecting to have a movie that's emotional, a movie that is animated as beautifully throughout, and it's smart with its script. The voice acting from Nick Johnson especially I think is incredible. Um, Chris Pine's in the movie for a little bit too. It's an A-list type of cast that I wasn't expecting. Brian Tyree Henry. Uh, oh, I'm forgetting everybody's name. Uh, John Mulaney, Nick Cage, who you mentioned earlier, Hell my yeah. guy, and he is hilarious in the movie. And it's just Liev Schreiber too is a uh, kingpin. Liev Schreiber as kingpin, which I think is the best performance of the year, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> the, you know, the, the giant black unit. square. <laughs> just he's, he covers the he's, entire screen. He's the definition of absolute. Unit. <laughs> he's an absolute unit. Yeah, he is. Um, and what I love is that you know people talk about diversity a lot, and they talk about representation and. What I love about the movie is that it does it in such a way that doesn't feel preachy. And for once, and this never happens to me, I actually was, like, affected by that, where I was like, it's kind of cool that, like, I can kind of relate to that kid a little bit. And I usually don't get caught up in all that stuff. I like Peter Parker. Like, come on. Like, I'm not related to him at all. You know, look at me. But there's um <laughs> there's something about that that really just touched me in a lot of ways, and I thought it was brilliant. And I can't wait to see it again. It's going to be one of those that I watch a lot. And number one. I've thought about it a lot, but I just thought this movie, every single part of it, and it's the only movie I could think of in a while where I thought being cringy was actually intentional and a good thing, not like face-off type of cringy, but that is my number one of the year is Eighth Grade, um, directed by Bo Burnham somehow. I can't believe that that guy who does those comedy routines (laughs) directed Eighth Grade, but I loved it, and I think that it's touching. It's really funny. I laughed way, way too many times at this movie. I know a lot of people were like, Ooh. it's kind of basically a horror movie. That's how I describe this movie. It's in a lot of ways horror, and it is understandably horrific because this time in your life when you're unsure of yourself and the pool scene in this movie, I can relate to a lot. Look at my body mass. That's why I can relate to it. Um, the, the scene with the with the dad towards the end, and there's just so many things in here that just capture it. It feels right. It just feels relatable. And then, you know what I mean? I thought, and Elsie, Elsie Fisher... Is tremendous. We'll be hearing from her very soon. Trust me. She's a movie star. Um, and I just think that realness is something that we don't always catch her with. You know, we talk about human stories, which is a term I hate because it often disparages anything that can be unrealistic, which is stupid. Why is the X-Men, why can't that be a human story? It's about segregation and discrimination. That's what X-Men is about. So why is that not a human story? I just think that's ridiculous. So what, what I'm trying to say is when they say human story, they're not actually saying what they're trying to say what they're saying by that um and i know that by saying they it's being a little bit vague but yeah in eighth grade (laughs) that was my favorite movie of the year uh we're running out of time so i'm going to kind of wrap it up here if you guys want to check out the full my full article and my full thoughts on the movies you can check it out just follow me on twitter and you'll find it at javapeno j-a-v-i-i-p-e-n-o so let's keep it going guys those are my top 10 of the year there we go awesome boom Boom, boom, pow. Boom, boom, pow. Boom, boom, pow. Shout out Will I Am. Dude, Black Eyed Peas released an album this year. If we're talking about pop culture, Black Eyed Peas dropped an album this year. I can't year. believe that. Like, There's a lot of good what? albums that dropped this year, right? Uh, there are a lot of good albums that dropped this year. Nice segue, because I wanted to talk about with my good friend here our albums of the year. Yeah, I decided to let you guys do this because I am the merciful ruler and decided let me let me let these guys do what they want. I once, still you know? don't have a list for this. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I feel it's like fine. you haven't been talking a lot. So like I want to I want I want to hear what your favorite albums of this year were. Um well, I think the two that well I have a couple albums I like this or year. Or not this year, but last year. But um, yeah, well, yeah, last year, 2018 mm-hmm. that one. Um a lot of good stuff came out. A lot of new uh bands I got into, a lot of new uh a lot of artists I've had interests in or bands. They released albums and such. Um but I wrote I wrote three reviews uh, mm-hmm. throughout the year. Yes, you did. Uh, last semester and the semester before um, about some of the albums and stuff that I liked that piqued my interest. 
Um, the first one was uh, My Dear Melancholy from The Weeknd. I really like that one. It's just an EP. It's just, it's the most original The Weeknd will ever get ever again. Probably uh, considering his latest release with uh, Gustafelstein. Uh, that's how I pronounce his name. Yeah, that's just, uh, I get the similarities with that song in Starboy. I get it. I don't think it's that similar, to be honest with you. But uh, but yeah, going back to Mind Your Melancholy, it's it's just a powerful, powerfully sad album. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, it's just the weekend, and just from it's just the, again the production is the closest we'll ever get to like trilogy, the weekend, or even Kissland. Um, mm-hmm. But again, it's it's a great EP. I love that a lot. Um, I think pretty much every song on there is great. Um, one's kind of a dud, but I still like that too compared to the other ones. Um, then again, we have, uh, later on this year, which I wrote, which I didn't write a review for. I wish I did, but Thomas wrote a great, uh, review for it, for the entertainment section. That was, uh, Brockhampton's Iridescence. Ooh! If you ever talk, if you, if you ever I talk to me, I couldn't stop it. if you ever talk to me, <laughs> you'll know that one of my favorite things in this world, besides eating, uh, and, uh, just not doing anything and sitting on my, and sitting on my butt is listening to Brockhampton. Uh, they're definitely one of my top five artists probably ever now because of just like just the music they make it's awesome it's just you'll have a great time partying to it you'll have a great time just being sad to it um and iridescence iridescence brings like that being sad to it anthony gavinelli i like it and you'll have a great and terrible time listening to this album because you get bangers like new orleans which starts off the album Mm -hmm. which is fantastic Mm. which then perfectly perfectly segues into <laughs> Thug Life, which I don't honestly think I've ever heard a song transition that well into a different song. Mm. Some people would suggest other songs, like you with that one, uh, the Frank about, Ocean song that has a transition in it. How about, me like that at least three times. Don't, all right, all right. How about right. Feels Like Summer to Outside? How about that one? Yeah, that's right. It's my favorite album of the year, Vince Staples, FM. That's right. Anyone listen to that's that? That's a hot I, take. I, I do yeah. like Vince. That's a great album. That's I'm also not a big great, music a person, album. but I've been listening to that I ever since it came out. That's I was, all I, I to. wasn't moved enough to write an album review, but I did it thoroughly enjoy it. Yeah. Mm, it's yeah. just, it's, no, and it's the, brief. I like the brevity. Yeah. Oh, yeah, thing. yeah. No, and I, I, and if we're talking about Iridescence, it's also one of my favorite albums of the year. Um, Dom's verse on Thug Life is one of the best mm-hmm. verses of the year, uh, hands down. Mm. Um so yeah, no, Bre- uh, Brockhampton, also one of oh, my yeah. favorites. Uh, amazing we, album. We Redescence. went to go see them. We did go see them. Really? At Terminal 5. My favorite oh, show of last year. Oh, no, no, no. My, mm-hmm. second, my second favorite show of last year, hands mm-hmm. down. And uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's please, it, please. it's a memorable show for me. I won't forget it ever because of, oh, wow, there's a lot of stuff that happened during that during that show. Oh, yes, there was. Mm-hmm. But uh, again, <laughs> going back. I was very tired when I saw yeah, him the next day. Going, going back. Yeah, it was, oh, gee whiz. Um, <laughs> uh, going back into the album, it's just. Wait is such. It, I don't think Wait gets it's a song on the album. Wait gets as much credit as it does, because it is just. I feel like so many people can relate to that, whether whatever your uh, sexual orientation is. It's just, it just, just listen to the song. I can't, mm-hmm. I can't tell you enough. Just, I feel just you. listen to it. Just do it. What are some um, other like main hits for you guys? Um, you know what I mean, like just for the year, just for the year. You know what I mean, like other albums and stuff. Just because we're running out of time, that's all. Oh, okay, um, sorry. Well, um, please. No, no and the, yeah, no, the please last one on. again is uh, the 1975, mm-hmm. uh, A Brief Inquiry into Online Relationships. A band that uh, I wasn't great really... Great album name, by it, the way. It, it, it is a great it. album. Considering the last it. album name, it's way better. Oh, 100 <laughs> billion percent, yeah. Um, but again, I wasn't that too big of a fan of the 1975. This album made me a huge fan of them now because of how, again, how terrific it is. I didn't expect to like this album this much. And I came away with it being like probably my second favorite album of the year that I listened to. It's just, it's hit after hit after hit. And again, mm-hmm. I wrote an album review for this one. Uh, Which everyone can check in at. Check, yeah, check out the Montclarian.org. Mm-hmm. It's .org, not .com. Uh, and yeah, it's just, again, I don't want I don't want to go too far into it because we only, we only have so much time. But yeah, just check it out. Mm-hmm. Song of the Year is on there. So. What about you, Deej? Um, my my personal favorite albums. Um, so yeah, I, I mean like. Uh, for those you know who know me, music and film are my two like passions. Mm. Um, so just li- just listing off uh, my favorite albums at uh, number fifteen, I have JPEG Mafia's Veteran, um, wildly experimental album, uh, awesome. Uh, he's been around for like a little bit, but like mm. this is the first I've ever heard of him. And just some of the production on this album is absolutely like mind bendingly insane. So highly recommend listening to that. Uh, same thing with uh, num- my number fourteen, which is Clarence Clarity's Think Piece. 
some also like very mind bending, um, very poppy production, uh, some great vocal performances from him. Uh, my number 13 is Death Grips with their album Year of the Snitch. Also right, very Anthony good. Fantano. Also, <laughs> also very good album. Uh, love Death Grips. Uh, been a huge fan of them for a while. I introduced him to them. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're big fans of Death Grips. Mm-hmm. Year of the Snitch is their most experimental. This is the album that they wanted to make mm. since the, cre- since oh, the start of their career. And it's amazing all the way through. Uh, number 12, I have my personal favorite band, uh, The Midnight, with their album Kids. Which uh, I got a very, you on. Which, yeah, which uh, we got he Javier did. on. Um, a very mixed bag for me at first, but uh, as I've listened to it throughout the year, uh, I started to warm up to it a little bit. It still has a lot of flaws, um, but overall, I think its positives outweigh its negatives with some amazing lyrics from uh, Tyler Lyle and some, again, incredible production from Tim. Uh, highly recommend that one. Who have you met? We have. We have. We met the midnight, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, hi, guys. <laughs> uh, with uh, my number 11, I have Kids See Ghosts uh, with their self-titled album, Kids See Ghosts. Kanye has always been uh, one of my favorite rappers from a production standpoint. Um, I always thought his rapping ability was great, but really his production is yeah, what stood out for me. I think me. most people think that. Yeah. I, I think he's one of the greatest producers who ever lived. When he says he's a genius, I full- wholeheartedly agree with it. His a, musical as prowess. Mm-hmm. As a producer. No, not as not as a human being, but as a producer. Uh, when he says he's a genius, uh, I wholeheartedly agree because he has made some incredible music. Um, and Kid Ghost is no different. So uh, they were a match made in heaven, Kid Cudi and Kanye West, and I'm very glad to hear that uh, their product was as good as it was. Mm-hmm. Uh, my number 10 is Kali Uchis with the album Isolation. Uh, my favorite R&B record of the year. Um, amazing, very sexual performances. Uh, just This album oozes just like just bravado and just um, sensuality, sexuality, just um, with some really interesting mashups of genres all throughout. Um, a lot of great guest appearances from Damon Albarn's, uh, D- Damon Albarn, um and uh by i think that's how you say her name um mm-hmm. but overall uh incredible album uh really really into it uh highly recommend checking that one out uh, my number nine is sophie with oil of every pearls on insides which is the weirdest album title yeah, of the year that is weird um the production on this thing is unlike anything i've ever heard on an album before it's all i can describe it it sounds like rubbing latex up against the brick wall uh so if that appeals to you then check this album out uh some very interesting themes on this album uh ranging from transsexuality to sexuality itself to coming to in uh coming to terms with who you are and what you are uh huge fan of that album my number eight is father john misty with god's favorite customer a very personal okay. album from All him right. uh probably his most personal album yet wasn't a huge fan of his uh 2017 album pure comedy mostly because of its uh, how expansive it was, and uh, I, I feel like it wasn't very cohesive with his themes. But um, God's Favorite Customer strips it back a little bit to the I Love You Honey Bear days, uh, one of my personal favorite albums of all time. And um, just just uh, a great exploration of grief, addiction, depression, and uh, also coming to terms with who you are and what you want to be. Uh, my number seven is Denzel Curry with the album Taboo, a okay. banger of an album, uh, mm-hmm. and a very aggressive, free-flowing album. Denzel Curry says some stuff on this record that is equally hilarious, um, thought-provoking, as well as scathing. So, highly recommend that album. My number six is Pusha T with Daytona, uh, the best out of the Wyoming Arguably project. Arguably the most talked about album. Because Definitely of the Pusha most T. talked about because of what <laughs> happened this year uh, with the whole Drake R. I. P. thing. R.I.P. Drake. <laughs> R.I.P. Drake, absolutely best diss track in a while. Mm-hmm. Um, that album, uh, very brief at, I think, 22 minutes or 24 minutes. Uh, best album out of the Wyoming Project from Kanye. Uh, really interesting thing that they did with the whole 22 minutes, seven track long uh, runtime. Huge fan of that. Uh, Lot to unpack on that album. Really glad they did it. Uh, Pusha T, one of my favorite rappers ever. Highly recommend Daytona. Number five, I have the French indie pop band Her with their self-titled debut Ooh, album. Yes, that's a, and I should have mentioned before. Gabs and I very much like this album. Uh, we actually saw them live again, mm-hmm. my I, show of the year. I introduced you to them. You did introduce me to them, and thank you for that very much. Mm-hmm. Um, so, very great album. A lot of uh, lot of very heartfelt moments ever since the passing of their... Of the, they, they were a duo now. It's just the, the, the one guy, Victor. Um, unfortunately, the other bandmate passed away of cancer, so now he's running the show. Um, very heartfelt tributes to him on the album, as well as some very great performances from both Victor and Simon. Uh, great alternative R&B record. Highly recommend it. Number four, I have Brockhampton with Iridescence. We already talked about that. Number three, I have Care For Me by rapper Saba. 
uh, Chicago rapper in the same vein as No Name, Smino, and Mick Jenkins. Uh, very conscious, very lyrically powerful. Um, huge fan of this album with the jazzy production. The album focus is a concept album focusing on the death of Saba's cousin. Um, very, very heartfelt, very sad, um, very real. A lot of talk about race relations and how uh, they impact us. Uh, huge fan of that album. Then my number two is 1975, Brief Inquiry. And my number one is Earl Sweatshirt with some rap songs. The literal definition wow. of depression. Uh, this year's Mad Villain, or this decade's Mad Villain. Uh, huge fan of Emma Thume. Um, and this album is a exploration into drugs, depression, grief, uh, and making amends with who you are and the past and everything. And I love it. It's amazing. Number one album of the year. Great year for music, guys. Great year for music. It's a great year for a lot of things, I think was a great year for a lot of things. I think that... This year was sicko mode. Yeah, sicko, sicko mode was something. Um, I think that in a lot of ways, we forget sometimes how good pop culture still is when it comes to... I, I think movies specifically, because I think people think... People have this idea that there's nothing new anymore that comes out of Hollywood, and they give you these eyes, they give you the Wolfman voice, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then I'm like, no, I mean, there are new ideas. The thing is that there's not big budget type of new ideas you know what i mean right. it's just that it's a lot i feel like the middle ground movie is something that we've kind of lost a little bit something like a, the social network you know what i mean you don't get a lot of those type of movies anymore but there's a lot of new ideas there's a lot of new ideas in music tv and for me one thing that defined my 2018 i actually watched tv for once oh yeah you know? i actually watched some tv series i have them right there i watched maniac i watched the good place i watched brooklyn 99 which i talked about earlier that i started watching it and suspiciously right after I started watching is when they announced the cancellation of it. Really? Um, so I blamed myself. Uh, Atlanta, which I saw season two of. Uh, My Hero Academia to annoy you because I like anime. Sorry. Um, what was it? I started The Office. I saw the first season of that, which because of how much people talk about it, it almost makes me not want to see it. You know what I mean? And then I watched Cowboy Bebop, which is mm -hmm. then American Vandal and New Girl. Just like random all over the place. Nice. Um, I just recently started The West Wing for this year, but we're talking about last year. And, man, guys, guys, things are still good. You know what I mean? There's yeah, some man. good stuff out there. And, and I'm it, so happy you guys were on, too. That was another you, thing. Uh, it was great. Mm -hmm. yeah. You got to come back. You got uh, to do it. We got to make I more would, fun of I Anthony would, over here. Still, is, love is it too. still the same time, same place uh, for during the semester? Or? May I go? Can oh, I do God. it? He's bringing it back. And, ladies and gentlemen, that about does it for today's edition of the Digital Dash. Remember that you can tune in. Every Monday, not from 4 to 7 p.m. here on 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair, but from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. here on 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair or the iHeartRadio app. So and as a, always. So there's a problem with that already because we have the newspaper meeting on Mondays at 11, so I can't, can't do that. That's our well critique then, meeting. Well, then uh, you're just going to have to come on beforehand. Come on at 10. I'm not willing to wake up for that, though. Well, you better be because you know why? Because I'm willing to wake up. I mean, Ain't no rest you for the wicked. To, so. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no rest for the wicked, Anthony. That's what they always say. Money don't grow on trees. And you're as always, getting, you're not getting paid for either one. That's the problem. <laughs> doesn't matter. I'm getting paid with memories. As that's I really, hope I that's gave really the rest cute, of the actually. I like that. That's like the best thing you've said in that voice. <laughs> I don't like that I said it in this voice. That's for that punk Javier. The Wolfman don't do cute. Well, I mean, you just said it. So, anyway, moving on. As always, to close things out. It's journey with separate ways, worlds apart. It's Remember, great. everyone. It's a great song. Never accept the world for what it appears to be. Dare to see it for what it could be. I'm Javier Reyes. Is that how you close every I, show? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a great quote. And I hope it's, you all have it's a It's not even his. Night. It's not no, yours. It's not <laughs> his. I'll tell you where it's from after this. Stay tuned, guys. I hope we all have a great night. See you at the start of semester. I won't be here next Monday, but we'll be the Monday after that, whenever that is. That's like the 30th, something like that. But yeah, stay tuned. The digital dash lives on. Keep on dashing, everybody, and just be keep be, on dashing in the free world. Be be kind, you know. Be kind. See you later, guys. Hope you have a great day.